speed. The big track down the road, one legend dons his suit at Daytona for the final time. At the short track up the street, there are some young legends perhaps in the making and some new careers just beginning. So don't touch that dial. Our summer fireworks for 4th of July are just set to begin. TNN, the network that brings you more Bush Grand National Racing than all other TV networks combined, presents the X1R Firecracker 200. Welcome to Volusia County Speedway in Barberville, just about 20 miles west of Mormon Beach, and not too far, almost within earshot of the World Center of Racing at Daytona Beach. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Joy, along with Neil Bonnet. And as perhaps you can tell, it's mm -hmm. 103 in the shade. Never mind what it is up here or what it's going to be in those race cars today. Mike, I tell you what, we've been here for two days, and everybody here's burned down. The camera crews setting everything up, the drivers. They had to work on the racetrack. We've been working ever since we've been here, and I'm telling you, it is a scorcher right now. Well, one of those legends in the making we saw at the top of the show is your son, David. He's had track championships at Birmingham. He's run well throughout the Southeast, but it's his very first Bush Grand National start. Dad? I tell you what, I'm uh, having a ball. You know, I was fortunate enough to win one of the firecrackers down the road here, but I don't think I've ever had as much fun. You know, we got one Earnhardt's cars here and the guys helping us with it and, and really having a lot of fun. The grandbaby, I'm getting where I'm enjoying this watching races. Richard Petty was asked this week about his most memorable moment from Daytona, and he said, seeing his son Kyle come here to Daytona and win his first race. Well, let's see how uh, Son Bonnet's going to do today. Uh, let's go trackside to Glenn Jarrett. Uh, thanks, Mike. 103 doesn't even approach how hot it is. Finally, I get to talk to a Bonnet with some real driving talent. He gets to start his first race in the Dale Earnhardt race car. How do you feel? Are you, I don't know who's more nervous, you or your dad. Well, I think Dad's pretty nervous, too, but I, I'm nervous now. But uh, all those will go away here shortly, just as this green flag falls. Well, we know what a pain he is to work with in the booth up there. How is he to drive a car for? He's pretty good. Uh, I think he just likes to rag, y'all. <laughs> well, we want to wish you the best. Take it easy out there, buddy. We're pulling for you. Uh, any last-minute uh, words of wisdom there, Dad? Stand on the gas and just turn that thing left and just use all the race car. <laughs> <laughs> David Bonner to roll off 12th here today. Well, the heat here has caused a bit of problems, not just for the competitors as they'll face it this afternoon, but yesterday during practice. The racetrack surface at turn two began to break up just a bit. The NASCAR drivers and officials held an impromptu meeting. They went out, toured the affected area, and decided to call off practice and qualifying yesterday afternoon. So the field qualified for this race at 1 p.m. today. After a crew came in late yesterday, dug up those asphalt patches that you see, and poured concrete into the affected areas. So the drivers this morning got a first look at this surface. Here's what they told Glenn Jarrett. Well, it's a whole lot better. I mean, it's 100% better than it was yesterday. Well, it feels pretty good. Um, they put cement in the patches, and the bottom groove is pretty good. Well, the, the part of the track they repaired is excellent. They did a super job last night of fixing it. Not bad. You know, we did, we've done this at Martinsville, and uh, so it, it's really not an issue right now. There's a look at the quarter mile here at Barberville, Florida. Jeff Gordon is on the pole for this race, yet again in the Ford. But the driver who will start fourth probably has more fans in the facility today than anybody else. Let's find out why with Glenn. Well, Mike, I'm standing next to Joe Nemechek from nearby Lakeland, Florida. Most people like to go home for the 4th of July. Joe Nemechek is no exception. You've been knocking on the door all year long. Think you can do it in front of the hometown folks? Well, it's good to be here in Florida. This is uh, this is my home track, and uh, this is my old stomping ground. So uh, I think if we have a shot, this is one of the best places we do. What's the key to it here, to Joe? you got to take it easy early on to see what the track's going to do. Yes, uh, the, the outside groove isn't real good, and uh, everybody's going to be fighting to get to the bottom to start with. And then it's just a matter of you got to save your car till the end of the race. And uh, the track is real slick, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of spins. I just hope I'm not one of them. And hopefully last 50 laps come around, we're in the top five, and we'll give them a run for their money. Well, we hope that's the case too, Joe. You folks stay tuned for TNN's live flag-to-flag -flag coverage of the X1R 200 here from Volusia County Speedway. We'll be right back. 
Last year, Davey Allison added something new to his car. It wasn't wider tires or a slicker shape. It was the same Haviland Formula 3 motor oil you can buy straight off the shelf to add more life to your car with complete protection against heat stress, starting friction, and engine dirt. Now, we're not saying it was Haviland Formula 3 that gave Davey the energy to lead more major NASCAR races than anyone last year and win this year's Daytona 500, but we're not saying it wasn't. This is Miller time. It's a duck. It's a tray. Yes, ladies. This buy, is buy, not. Buy, buy, buy. If you buy five of them, you get one free. Miller time. Here we are in Arkansas. Here we are not in Not Miller time. Here we are in Florida. It's a simple idea. Miller time. Not. Make your 4th of July Miller time with this official USA team volleyball. Look for it where you buy another beer. Everyone knows when it's Miller time. Split fire earned a United States patent. Split Fire doesn't look like any other spark plug. And the patented Split Fire doesn't work like any other spark plug. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. Quicker in the quarter mile. A 4.8% gain in mileage. There's nothing like a Split Fire. You'll get more power and more mileage. Or your money back. Get the guaranteed Split Fire advantage at leading automotive stores from coast to coast. Iron Mike on Rust. I hate rust. Iron Mike on tough. This is tough. Rust tough. This is rust. Holium? The dictionary defines tough as strong, not easily influenced. Like me. The definition of oleum is... Ah! We sprayed this rusty metal plate with fast-drying rust tough, exposed the rusted metal, then placed it in the torture salt fog chamber. The rust didn't spread. It stayed tough. You want tough? What do you want? Oleum. Got rust? Get tough. Rust tough. The Nashville Network's exclusive live coverage of the X1R Firecracker 200 is brought to you by Texaco, official sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. And by Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Genuine Draft Light, taking the country by storm. And by Split Fire Spark Plugs, more power, more mileage, or your money back. They have fired the engines here at Volusia County Speedway in Barberville, Florida, just northwest of the World Center of Racing. Let's catch you up on what happened as we have passed the midpoint of the Bush Grand National season. Here is this week's Haviland Update. Last week, the Bush Grand National Series headed north to the Finger Lakes of upstate New York and Watkins Glen on the road course for the Phase 150. Kenny Wallace started on the pole with Robert Presley alongside due to point standings as qualifying was rained out. And Wallace went straight to the front to lead the first seven laps before Jeff Gordon got passed in the inner loop at the end of the back straightaway to put the Ford out in front. Gordon would have a short-lived run at the lead, trying to gain points on the leader, Kenny Wallace. Here's Mark Martin, who had an oil leak put him behind the wall after only 26 laps. In just 19 laps, though, Ernie Irvin would take his Chevy to the front, coming from 32nd starting position to take the lead. Jimmy Spencer, fresh off his Myrtle Beach win, loses control trying to pass Jeff Burton and had to settle for 22nd spot. At the halfway point, Irvin gives up the lead and comes to pit road. That puts Bill Elliott's Ford out in front for two laps until Elliott pits. Bobby the Body makes a soft landing into the tire wall. Well, not that soft. Look at the damage to the right side of his Chevy, but he continued and finished. Not so Bill Elliott. Fuel pump problems put him out of the race. At the finish, Ernie Irvin had Todd Bodine right on his tail, and last year's winner Terry Labonte breathing right down his bumper. But Irvin hung on to win his first Bush Grand National victory of the season. Kenny Wallace has his point lead cut into by Joe Nemechek. Bobby Labonte's still there. Robert Presley and Jeff Gordon, though the gap has spread out just a little bit from last week. They fired engines are getting set to go three pace laps. So let's have a look at the starting lineup. Seventh pole position of the season for Jeff Gordon driving the baby Ruth Ford. On the outside pole, we'll see Todd Bodine. He, of course, in the Hungry Jack Buick. Bobby Labonte, the series champ in the Slim Jim Chevrolet, and Joe Nemechek from nearby Lakeland, the Texas Beach Chevrolet. Tom Peck and 11 Racing Olds will start fifth, and Robert Presley, climbing his way through the points, goes sixth. After crashing in practice, Ricky Craven came back to post the seventh fastest time. Chuck Bowne will have an in-car camera today. He is eighth. The two Michigan guys keep starting side by side. Tracy Leslie in an Oldsmobile and Butch Miller in an Olds, the fifth row. 
Steve Grissom, the Alabama Gangs in row six, his Oldsmobile, and David Bonnet in a Chevrolet. Bobby Dotter in an Oldsmobile in row seven, along with Jeff Burton's Olds. In the eighth row, Jimmy Spencer in an Oldsmobile, and Kenny Wallace, the point leader in a Pontiac way back in 16. Ward Burton's Buick will start 17. Tommy Houston's Buick, the outside of the ninth row. In row 10, Troy Beebe is on pit road with trouble to his Ford. He is not pulled up. Jeff Green is there alongside on the inside row number 10. Troy Beebe is outside. Shauna Robinson with some new sponsorship picks up the ride in the Don Beverly car. And Mike Porter will go 22nd in a Chevrolet. Jerry Glanville in the Atlanta Falcons Buick. Ian Elvis riding there in 23rd spot. That's the way they'll go off. I think Elvis left tickets for Jerry. Yeah, Elvis, yeah, Elvis left tickets for Jerry. Wonder if Elvis left any uh, ignition parts for Troy Beebe's car. Glenn Jarrett, what's up? Mike, the car just won't fire. The uh, crew chief car owner, Rhett Paxton, is uh, looking under the hood right now, but it just simply won't fire. Oddly enough, he's on the 10th row. David Green was beside him. When David fired his car up, a huge, huge plume of smoke came out from under the car. A couple of the uh, nearby crew members came running over to ask me if they needed help, but he said his car was okay. So 10th row wasn't a good row to be on today. Now motioning for BB to try to fire that car once again. Some of Tommy Houston's crew coming over, see if they can help out the wreckers there to push that car out of the way. As we may get a start, yeah, the kids are going to hold a lap or two here for Troy Beebe's car. I'll tell you one thing, Mike, they don't need to hold to warm the cars up. They're no, all warm. Sir. It's just sitting still. 100 degrees in the shade. Think of what it is inside of Chuck Bounds, Nescafe, and ST Pontiac. Our Armor All in car camera giving you these pictures. There's our 360 degree race cam. And also, we've got a camera on just below the back bumper of uh, Chuck Bounds car. Like that shot as they came off that corner there, they could see the patching in that corner. And in practice, they put cones out there and made them drive around that. So they're going to have to work the cars high and low in the middle of one and two. Track did a real good job of fixing it overnight. Field comes around turn number four. We're going to get at least one more lap here as uh, Troy Beebe's car has fired and he'll pick up the tail end position on the field. That's turn four around to the start finish line. This nice little quarter mile track used to be dirt. And there's the uh, patches, the concrete patches. That one in turn one is about big enough to put a New York City taxi cab into. They've got potholes that size in Manhattan. As the record rolls by, and here comes the field. As they'll see as these cars go through here under caution, the ones on the inside, that inside lane is the preferred lane. That part, the big part to the outside, is real treacherous on these guys working the outside lane. So this start is going to be real tricky getting a single foul. Temperature? <laughs> it says only 99 degrees. I don't believe it. We didn't have <laughs> enough numbers for the <laughs> right. deal. Humidity past the halfway mark. Little breeze. That'll help, but it's blowing warm air. Not a, well, a little wispy cloud or two in the sky. That's all we've got here. It is hot. They're giving one to go. 200 laps around this racetrack. Kenny Wallace won this race last year. And we'll mention that Kenny Wallace made his Bush Grand National debut. Also driving Dale Earnhardt's car at Martinsville, 1988. Do I always get up on the edge of my seat like this for the start of a race? You look you look a little nervous, Bonnet. <laughs> look, turns are nine degrees, straight away six degrees, big oval in the back straight away. Nice little racetrack for some good racing. Kenny Wallace holds the record for the 200 lap distance. As we get set to go here, they run the Winston Racing Series weekly at this track, one of the many NASCAR short tracks around the country having some pretty good racing. So, uh, in fact, after our telecast, why not go out and visit the short track near you? 200 laps were set to go. Jeff Gordon in the four, Todd Bodine in the Buick, and Grand Marshal Bill Markdahl, after just having completed the uh, Pepsi 400 at Daytona, came over here to wave the green flag, and it's Gordon off turn two with the lead. Bodine drops right in line. Labonte is with him in third. Nemechek fourth. Tom Peck fifth. That car up on the outside to the right of your screen is Robert Presley digging hard and battling Ricky Craven for six. Presley fighting hard on the outside. Now Todd Bodine with a challenge from Bobby Labonte down low and Labonte will take over the second spot. They're going, excuse me, Mike, they're going to be fighting that inside line. That thing is really critical getting around here quick today. Ford, Chevrolet, and Buick, the front three. There's that second place battle behind the leader, Jeff Gordon. Chuck Bound battling side by side as well, back at about eighth place with Presley, who has slid back a bit in the field. That outside groove just didn't work in well enough for he or Butch Miller, both trying the outside. <laughs> 
No, these drivers all day long are going to really have to discipline themselves. They have a one tire rule. You put one tire on each position, which is four tires, kind of discipline yourself and not burn the tires up as hot as the track is. They've tried that rule in NASCAR's modified division, the Winston Modified Tour, and I like it. You get the four tires on the car, you get four tires, one for each corner in your pit, and that's all you get. I liked it because I just bought eight tires when we got here. <laughs> Spoken like a true car owner. <laughs> Watching Jimmy Spencer, they're pulling up on Tracy Leslie. Between them, Bobby Dodder's car, and you notice like several of them on this tour, it is completely unsponsored. Dodder looking for some financial help. The Chicago driver in 08 there, that bright rocket red painted car. Jimmy Spencer gets underneath, and now here comes Butch Miller. Joe Nemechek almost got the wall between turns three and four. Here's Nemechek coming back into the action. Trouble. Butch Miller spinning on the front straightaway. And caution is out. Well, Nemechek lost it between three and four, and then Butch Miller came off four and got around. Don't know if one of those cars might be dropping anything, any fluid on the racetrack. Looked like he got in the gas up off the corner and just spun it around. Seven laps complete at Volusia County Speedway. TNN's live coverage on Independence Day continues after this. In trying to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sports Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanations. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. There are a lot of cars that suit the way I live. I just can't think of too many I can afford. There is this one. It's got a V6. It's pretty quick. Looks sharp. And winter's a problem. Now there's a Dodge Shadow convertible with a V6. You can even get one with a roof for under 10 grand. A roof could be good. Over a million people each week walk into AutoZone, and taking care of them means having what they need when they need it. That means stocking a lot of parts for a lot of cars. Now, nobody can stock everything, but we stock more than most. And how do we know which ones to carry? That's easy. We listen to our customers, because nobody knows better about what you want than you. So the next time you walk through that door, you might think of yourself as a customer, but we think of you as the boss. This is Miller time. It's a duck. It's a tray. Yes, ladies. This buy, is buy, not. Buy, buy, buy. If you buy five of them, you get one free. Miller time. Here we are in Arkansas. Here we not are in Nebraska. Miller time. Here we are in Florida. It's a simple idea. Miller time. Not. Make your Fourth of July Miller time with this official USA Team volleyball. Look for it where you buy another beer. Everyone knows when it's Miller time. Billy Joe Royal. Your memory is always with me. Holly Dunn. You really had me going, baby. Now I'm gone. The stars are singing full throttle on Drive and Country. Tonight at 6.30 Eastern on TNN. We went back to green flag racing briefly, only for a lap before Tracy Leslie spun at turn two. We're going to go green again this time by. There's a look at how the top ten are running. Tommy Houston makes a very brief pit stop. And uh, Glenn, I don't think they had time to do much. We'll check back down there in a moment. Here's a look at what happened to Butch Miller to bring out that caution flag at lap seven. Right side of your screen is Miller's car. Coming up off the corner, it gets loose. Back in comes around on the car. And he loops it down the front straightaway. That was the first of the cautions. Here we are back green. After Tracy Leslie's spin, we go back to green at lap 13. And there's Miller, a lap down, 75 Food Country car. Todd Bonine getting passed. So the three leaders get a little bit of a cushion here. With the lap car of Butch Miller, though he is back up to race speed. Tom Peck just behind, having a good early run here in the fourth spot. And Ricky Craven in fifth. Craven crunched that car up pretty good. There was Butch Miller trying to get a lap back, trying to get there to 10. He got into Todd Bodine coming off fourth turn. And there's 
Bodine and Tom Peck going at it. Yeah, and that outside lane is hard to work out there. They got him outside, and you'll probably see a few cars get by. That'll be for third place. And if Todd hangs on that outside, the four biscuits underneath that car are going to get burnt. And now Chuck Bowser is out there with them as they've now got Butch Miller down to the inside. Watching from Bounds' car, that's Ricky Craven just ahead. He and Todd Bodine side by side. And <laughs> toe to toe there for a moment. Now Chuck's underneath, and he's not going to let Todd back in line. Ooh, yes, he does. He just made his way back in line here. That's what you have to do on these short tracks. You open the door, you've got to close in a hurry, or someone's right under you. Not sure if we still have the back bumper shot off Chuck Bounds' car. Or Steve Driss just kind of channel locked his back bumper there as they went into the corner. Nope, still working. There we go, it's working. Yep. And he's still nipping away at it. <laughs> That's right. Looks like a peaceful shot there because that guy gets that nose up under the back of that car. And here he comes. He gets the nose in the shade of that back bumper. He's really doing something. Yeah, he's actually up under the other car. Yeah, that's Steve Grissom following Chuck Bow down into turn number one. I'd like to have that coming at you at about 120 miles an hour here. They're running for sixth and seventh place. Robert Presley right behind him, then Joe Nemechek, Jimmy Spencer, Jeff and Ward Burton. Bobby Dodder and Kenny Wallace. That's just about as close as you'd ever want to see that car. Yeah, that's enough right there to feel it. Now here comes Presley. Actually, this is about an eight-car tango going down the front straightaway. All nose to tail. Boy, they just nobody stepped out of line. You know, anybody that's been out has been trapped out there. And they say that this racetrack you used to get pass on the outside. I haven't seen anybody try it yet. No. Yeah, they've been passing, but they've been passing, waving goodbye, going backwards. But Mike, you know, the track, they did a lot of work on the possibility during the course of this day. They can work that outside lane back in. That big patch there is the thing that keeps them from getting out there. Grissom and Bound together, and Robert Presley wanted a bit of Grissom's car on the inside. And there's Kenny Wallace in the pits and the hood up. He's pulled that car actually behind the wall. Uh, were there one? Glenn Jarrett will be there in a minute. This could be a crushing blow to the point standing leader. Close company there is Jerry Glanville without goes a lap down. They're still battling. There's Presley looking at that outside line we've been talking about. He, he took a look outside, Chris, and we see him come up on the outside off that other corner. Look how the nose of that car drops. Now it just lifts a bit as you get on the throttle again. Yeah, Hard acceleration off these corners. Really lays the right front down. Let's check with Glenn down in the Kenny Wallace pit. Well, Mike, I came running down here to the end of pit road where they pitted, and now they push the car back some. Uh, evidently, they're just trying to get it out of the way. There is a problem, uh, something with the coil, something in the electrical system. I can see Steve Bird trying to, uh, working on the electrical system as well. So evidently, that's the problem. We'll get an update on this uh, here shortly and confirm it and be right back here. That's the trouble with black block black. black uh, that's the trouble trying to say it. Black box electronics. They work or they don't. In this case, they don't. Jeff Gordon has checked out on Bobby Labonte and the rest of this field. He holds perhaps a four second lead on Labonte and the rest of the field a bit further back. But now we've seen this movie before and it doesn't always have a happy ending. You no, know, the car's always shown a lot of ability to just jump out front and take off. And, but if it stays together, now they're a handful. The, the trick is on this hot day, can you keep that thing together? Garden laps by Troy Beebe as we'll put 30 laps of 200 on the board this time by Gordon the leader, Labonte, Peck, and Craven. Well, I drive a race car for a living. I depend on the parts and pieces in my car. And I feel so confident knowing that Penzoil is protecting the moving parts inside of my engine. Penzoil's quality and protection give me the confidence I need to do my job without second thought. The protection that Penzoil offers this race team makes us feel great. That's why I have the confidence to use it on the street and in my race car. I recommend Penzoil to everybody. Penzoil, performance, protection, quality. It's your boss on the phone. He says, do you still work here or not? I called the airline like you said, and sure, there's a later flight tomorrow. 
when you just can't wait to get started. Start with the Champion. Pound for pound, the most powerful automotive battery you can buy. Get your Champion now by calling 1-800-289-4627 for a dealer near you. The time has come for the cordless power roller from Wagner. It's so quick and easy, it can cut painting time in half. So get your hands on a real value, because the value of Wagner keeps on rolling. Here's the real beauty of Rust-Oleum Protective Coatings. A tough barrier against the elements. Rust-Oleum. The name that means protection. And isn't it true that this auto part did, in fact, come from the defendant's car? Objection! Prosecution is leading the witness. Overruled. You may answer the question. This part most definitely came from that car. And how can you be sure? I work for Napa Auto Parts. It's my job to be sure. No further questions, Your Honor. Napa people are parts experts, so they can answer any question, whatever the case may be. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the X1R Firecracker 200 is being brought to you by Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. We're under the third caution of the day. It happened when Jeff Green spun at turn number four. Tommy Houston just made a pit stop, and they took four rounds of bite out of the right rear of his car. Tracy Leslie's on pit road, and Glenn Jarrett still. Kenny Wallace is still parked in the pits. Glenn? Yeah, he's parked in the pits. He's got company in the car now. There's two crewmen in there with him. Uh, they have changed the entire uh, ignition box on this car. The backup box wouldn't work. They, they simply cannot get the car to fire. It hadn't struck a lick since I've been standing here for the last uh, uh, five or six minutes. So they've really got a serious problem. And Kenny's just sitting there hanging his head. He can see that point lead melting away. Boy, that's a helpless feeling, too. You know, they've got some good mechanics down there, and it's not something that can just be fixed overnight. They've got, they've got to do a lot of work on that electrical system. If the backup system doesn't crank it, then they got all the wiring system they got to work on, so it's not going to be easy to fix. And there's nothing you can adjust. There's nothing you can hammer on. There's, there's Re nothing you can do but replace the whole replace thing. Replace it, and it's not easy to do. Here's a bonnet. David, by name, uh, was having himself a good run back there. Uh, kind of had drifted back from the lead pack, but he is still on the lead lap and uh, giving good account of himself today. Yeah, just keep that thing in one piece for a while. We'll see what happens after a while. Okay. 35 laps complete. We're back under green. Good jump by Bobby Labonte. Up and underneath from the lap cars. He's right behind Jeff Gordon, and traffic gets a little tough a little further back as green fades back in the field. And Tommy Houston after that pit stop trying to work his way up through. They're going to shuffle Tom Peck in the running order. Chuck Bown erupts him up a bit as they come off turn four. All chasing Jeff Gordon. They're black flag in one car. I couldn't really tell which number it was, Mike, as they went under the flag stand. They got one of the black flag. It was either Jimmy Spencer or Jeff Burton. We'll see. I see Tommy Houston pulling to the inside. I don't know if he's got a problem with that black flag in him. Tommy Houston getting the black flag, that is. And he'll come back to pit road, this time under the green. There's Jeff and Ward Burton, Bobby Dodder, and David Bonnet working underneath Jeff Green. Houston got a stop and go. And they uh, black flag Tommy Houston for pitting with the cars on the lead lap. Remember, the first lap that pit road is open is only for cars on the lead lap, and Houston may have thought he was. NASCAR disagreed. Mike, we just got a call that said Todd Bodine is losing his brakes. And I would doubt several of these cars don't have that trouble today. It is so hot. There's a minimum of braking that you do. I mean, a maximum you can do on the cooling area. And boy, they're going to run hot today. Houston is all but stopped out of turn two. And there you saw Joe Nemechek run right up the back bumper of Houston. Jimmy Spencer almost able to capitalize on that in the number 20 car, the Daly's first aid machine. 200 laps around this little quarter mile. Track used to be dirt, was converted to pavement a few years ago. Put on some good shows here every weekend. They play host of Bush Series once a year. Nemechek getting underneath Troy Beebe. Still has Spencer as his shadow. Boy, Spencer never really worked on that car. Every lap of practice, he was sideways all the way around this racetrack, and they've done a, made a lot of gains with his car and picked it up. That was the battle for ninth. Now we're with the race for seventh place. Trouble in three. Ward Burton goes around and up to the fence. Boy, no you. caution. That's a surprise. Did not get a yellow. Now he looped it and he kept going, so they did not throw the caution. 
Burton stayed on the lead lap, but now is going a lap down to Jeff Gordon. Or fighting like everything trying not to go a lap you down. Bet. It's going to be hard to hold that forward off. And there he goes to the Jeff Gordon, moved the inside, cleared him, and going to go around Glanville on the outside. Jerry Glanville's running about uh, third down and seven right now. Third, a long third, let's call it. Two laps back. Jeff Gordon again taking off and sprinting away from this field. He owns two victories this season already at Atlanta and at Charlotte looking for his first short track win. 46 of 200 laps complete. They're looking for a little shade down there. We'll be back. It's Dwight Knight. Spend an hour with one of country's biggest superstars. Dwight Yoakam in the spotlight, Monday on TNN. Al, our special guest is Ricky Skaggs. Hi, Katie. Hey, Al. Ricky, I have a question for you. Okay. I have been practicing on my guitar, and I want to go all the way to the Grand Ole Opry. Uh -huh. What's the best way? Al, in your case, I'd say you need to get an Opryland USA passport. Really? Oh, yes, sir. It's a great deal, Al. For just $69.95, you get all the Opryland USA attractions, and that's a 20% savings. And it includes a matinee performance of the Grand Ole Opry. Plus three days of rides and shows and fun at Opryland theme park. You get a reserved seat for a country star concert in the park. A ticket to Nashville now. And a day cruise on the General Jackson showboat. And a Grand Ole Opry sightseeing tour of Nashville. That sounds like the best country music vacation value in the country. It is. And if you want to get your Opryland USA Passport, just have your credit card handy and call 615-889-6611. Ricky, I really want to know, what's the best way to perform on the Opry? Well, Al, in your case, practice. Lots of practice. Don't you think so? Please. And turn that guitar. <laughs> Welcome back to Volusia County Speedway. Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet and Glenn Jarrett, losing lots of pounds, running up and down pit road in 100 degree heat today. While we were away, Mike Porter just drilled the 24 Troy Beebe and almost sent him out in the parking lot. There's Beebe's car. He managed to recover, but he's since gone a second lap down there to leader Jeff Gordon in the Bill Davis Baby Ruth Ford number one. Mike, he was headed all the way out of the parking lot, just like <laughs> you said, out to the ticket booth, and he got it back under control. Trouble in four. Chuck Bound goes around on the front bumper of Robert Presley, and that will bring out a caution. Fourth one of the day, and it comes out at lap 53. 1990 champion bound. Coming down pit road, as you see from the in car camera. Let's have another look, see how this one got started. Here they come. Presley's up under him off the corner. They got together coming up off the corner, turned Bound's car around, and uh, right here they're both headed to the outside fence. They get together, the car slide up the track, and they pin both of them against the wall. They made contact coming off that turn. Like no serious damage, and here is Bound coming around the racetrack. So, with this, the fourth caution of the day, Jeff Gordon's led every lap so far. Bobby Labonte right behind him. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. Were they talking about this one or the patent winning split fire? More power, you decide. Put a leading European spark plug up against split fire. More direct firepower means more horsepower. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. Split fire, more power for your money back. Get world-class split fire performance at leading U.S. retail stores nationwide. Last year, hundreds of thousands of people bought a Fedders room air conditioner. Was it the large selection with features like a Comfort Master Precision Thermostat or extras like the heavy-duty rear grill that protects the condenser coil? Could it be the portability, extra quiet performance, and easy installation of the innovative Microsonic? One thing is certain, you can't do better than a Fetters. you need to push your truck. 
Yokohama High Performance Light Truck Tires. Here's the real beauty of Rust-Oleum Protective Coatings. A tough barrier against the elements. Rust-Oleum. The name that means protection. TNN's coverage of the X1R Firecracker 200 is being brought to you by Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. Those umbrellas you see in the grandstand are not for rain. They're parasols to keep the sun from beating down here at Volusia County. Packed house today. A lot of folks came over from the Speedway after watching uh, Ernie Irvin win the 400 there. Here's another look. Here they come, coming up off corner. Presley had a big run going right there. And he got into Chuck coming off the corner, and he just lifted Chuck's rear wheels off the ground, turned him around there, and then Presley and him go up the track and hit. Uh, you know, when a guy, make, he's, he's making a run off, going to make a run on him, and he just got into him up off the corner. Our bumper cam did not like that one bit. I don't know if we have a bumper cam. <laughs> a while ago, we almost lost it. I think that got it. There's the in-car camera as you ride with Chuck Bound. He made a pit stop, as did Robert Presley, Tommy Houston, Ward Burton, and Jeff Burton were both in twice, and Shauna Robinson in the Polaroid car. A new sponsor today on the Don Beverly machine uh, was also on pit road. Glenn can maybe update us on some of those stops. And Kenny Wallace's car is still being worked on back there behind pit wall. Over. Here's a look at the top 10 as they're running under caution. Fourth one of the day, 58 laps complete. Gordon in the Ford, Levante Chevrolet, and then further back, David Bonnet showing up in the 10th spot in his Bush Grand National debut. Over at the Daytona International Speedway earlier today, Ernie Irvin won the Pepsi 400 over Sterling Marlin, the pole sitter. Dale Jarrett was third. Oh, here we go. Watch this. Here's Inco. Here comes Presley making a run. They're going down. Here comes off the corner. And just like he said, lights are out. The party's over. You're going around. And then there's the end car taking the lick on the front. So uh, that's one of those days you, deals you can't say, I didn't hit him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I guess not. you got to figure out why you hit him when you do it when you cut in on all those cameras. No. But Robert's a good racer and uh, just trying his hard, you know, hardest to get around Chuck. Chuck had his hands full right there. It's a racing incident there. Um, we mentioned Dale Jarrett finished third over at Daytona today. Jeff Bodine, Bill Elliott, fourth and fifth. Kenny Schrader, Ricky Rudd, Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, and Davey Allison. That was the top ten. You think we can get a cool suit for the booth here? I need a cold driving suit out. You've got to do something. <laughs> it's nice and warm up here, folks. It's 100 outside. It's 120 here. It's about 140 inside those race cars. One green and one lap. Yep, the honor to King and a president over at Daytona today. President Bush was there, gave the command of fire engines. Richard Petty raced Daytona for the last time, led the first three or four laps. But uh, they had him out to make presentations to him about an hour before uh, the race started. And once it did, uh, Richard had to get climb out of the car with, from the heat. I don't know that anyone could stand out there for an hour and then climb in a car and race. They pretty well used him up today. Yeah. We're getting ready for uh, green flag racing at lap 60. That white Ford on the inside is Jeff Gordon's. He has led every lap. Bobby Labonte's tried to hang with him. Gordon has really gotten such a jump on restarts. One of those lap cars has been able to separate him from Labonte just about every time here. This time that is Butch Miller separating the two leaders. Todd Bodine real loose up front of the pack. This is going to stack him up. He got it sideways coming off four. Got to get back. It. Yeah, he got to gather back in. Jeff Burton now to the inside of Shauna Robinson. Gave him one of those Polaroid snapshots as he went by. I'm telling you, on this short track stuff, when you start working lap traffic like this, it can really cost you some positions with this two abreast racing. And uh, it's hard to get around a track this size as slick as it is. Now, you think you've got a tough day. How about Eddie Pearson standing there down in the pits? Does he watch his car with Robert Presley or does he watch his wife, Shauna? He better be watching his wife or he'll lose his job at home. Not necessarily at <laughs> work. That could be. 64 laps as you ride along with Chuck Bound chasing Robert Presley. Now the uh, position's reversed from what we saw a few minutes ago that brought out that fourth caution flag. Oh, boy, there. Now that was that was a good move right there on Chuck Bound's part. He was sailing off in the corner full speed. Presley lifted, and you'd almost say, well, he's going to pay him back. And he really made an evasive move not to get in the back of Presley. Nope. There's the 24 of Troy Beebe being passed by Presley and Bound. 
That's the two cars right there that spun in the opposite place a while ago. And I'm telling you, Chuck Baum really did a good job to keep from ramming the back of Presley going in this turn. I'm not going to say how many times he's going to do it, but he did a good job last time. <laughs> yes, he did. The 1990 Bush champion. Running up against the fellow many folks have. He'll have a real good shot to be this year's champion. Here's Joe Nemechek out of Lakeland. That yellow Texas beat car. Sweetwater is a local restaurant. Hooked up the hood sponsorship on that car for this race, but they are seeking additional sponsorship for the remaining races on the tour for that hooded and deck lid. Zito's Pharmacy also on board for the season there with Joe, who has a lot of folks from Lakeland here today, just 100 miles away from Barberville. There goes Jimmy Spencer. He took a look outside and parked out on a little bit. They keep testing the water out there, Mike. They keep sticking those right side tires out there. They say, what does it feel like? It, it, it might take a while, but I believe they're going to get that outside workable. They're going to have to, Neil, if they're going to do any passing. But these cars have guarded the bottom groove so well they've worn away the yellow line at the bottom of the racetrack in turns one and two. You know, a lot of times you come around and you'll ask a driver to come in and say, hey, where's the groove here? The groove here is on the guardrail around the bottom. It's <laughs> as low as you can get. That's right. There's Nemechek left of your screen, Steve Grissom in the middle. And a fellow's having a real good run here today, Ricky Craven in that DuPont 99 car. He tore that thing up here pretty bad in practice, and uh, they weren't sure if they could get it glued back together. And then he went out and qualified in the top ten. Mike, it looked like the throttle hung over something. He went the third turn. I'm telling you, he destroyed that car. It knocked the frame around. They worked all night on last night, and they done a heck of a job to get in the race, much less qualify and run as well as they are. He's got Jimmy Spencer behind him now, but Craven having a good run here today. He's in the sixth position. Spencer is seventh. Back in eighth uh, is Tom Peck and ninth Bobby Dotter. 10th, David Bonnet unofficially. Then Mike Porter, uh, Jeff Burton, and Robert Presley and Chuck Bound coming back up through the pack after pit stop. There's Tom Peck and Bobby Donner. Peck ran in the front five in the first part of this race. Has one finish there, five in the top 10 thus far. 75 laps this time for Jeff Burton. Excuse me, for Jeff Gordon. Well, 75 for Jeff Burton, too, but he's he's not running away with this race like Jeff Gordon is. Well, the traffic down in the corners is brutal. We're watching the lead car here, but back in the corners and they're popping and banging. And here's Jeff Gordon, the guy that's got the fastest car racetrack, and watch how careful he is through the corner. He's going to get under this guy down the straightaway. He's going to take that inside line. He doesn't want to have to try anybody on the outside. And he, as fast as his car is, he's still taking that preferred inside line. We've got a fellow up near us, a short tracker, uh, Peter Fiendaka, and ask him, why you always pass guys on the inside? He says, because eight wheels corner better than four. We asked Jeff Gordon if it's distracting for you when you come here to Daytona. Keep your mind on racing. Nah, I wish I could. Heck, I just watch him out there on the beach. I don't get to go out there too often. I just uh, see everybody else having fun out there. But we're here to race, and that's where my, where my head's at, where my mind's uh, going to be concentrating on this whole weekend is just on this race car, not on the beach. Oh, this athlete's foot. The itching, the burning. And the odor. Phew. Uh, stop the itch and the odor with new Odor Eater's Athlete's Foot Cream. Odor Eaters for Athlete's Foot? Look, Odor Eaters Cream cures itching, burning athlete's foot while it controls that awful odor, yet it costs less than any of these. No more athlete's foot. And no more odor. New Odor Eaters Athlete's Foot Cream. Powder and spray, too. Quote, Dodge Dakota Sport with a new optional 180 horsepower Magnum V6 out accelerates Ford Ranger and Toyota and does it for under 10 grand. Unquote. Dodge, the most powerful line of trucks anywhere. Get 500 cash back on Dakota during the Dodge Dare to Compare Challenge. start to be the one great tasting beer that's less filling. Miller Lite's everything you want a beer to be. I didn't think she'd come. I know she'd come. Yeah. Miller Lite, I like it like that. Come on! And it's another day of sub 
It's your boss on the phone. He says, do you still work here or not? I called the airline like you said, and sure, there's a later flight. Tomorrow. When you just can't wait to get started, start with the Champion. Pound for pound, the most powerful automotive battery you can buy. Get your Champion now by calling 1-800-289-4627 for a dealer near you. Sunday, live on TNN Motorsports. Last time we went to Canada, so did the rain, forcing delays and making for a very unusual day. But Gary St. Amand didn't seem to mind. Now the American Speed Association returns to our neighbors to the north, and fair weather or not, the racing's gonna be hot. It's the 25th anniversary of the ASA AC Delco Challenge Series. Players Limited 400, Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern, live on TNN Motorsports. Getting set for the restart, there's 10th place David Bonnet. What were you telling him there during commercial? I was just talking to him. I asked him how it felt, and he said, this darn old car run a lot faster than I'm running it. But, you know, I just told him to take his time and try to finish the race, and he's going good. I'm tickled to death. Great flag, great flag. That's Tony Urie calling the green flag. We've got in-car radio communication with David, and maybe during one of these caution flags, uh, we'll get a word with him. Once again, Jeff Gordon steps it out. He yanks Bobby Labonte down the back straightaway by three car lengths. There's Nemechek down on the inside. There's Trying. a lot of, lot of that lap, lap traffic he's talking about. Mike really hinders everybody coming up through there, but I mean, that's, that's the way it is. The lap guys do have an opportunity to get their laps back. A couple of lapped cars getting separated. Look at the distance in just two laps that Jeff Gordon has built up. Butch Miller had been rolling around slow on the racetrack just before that caution. Now he's back up to speed, but you saw him there on the left side of the screen in danger of going a second lap down, which is already one lap down. There's your front twosome. And for the rest of the field, that is looking a little gruesome as uh, Gordon just, boom, just disappeared. Boy, lately, every time we've been doing one of these bush races, he's shown that dominance. Trouble in four. Mike Porter and Troy Beebe go around. The rest of the field scatters. And yes, that was Kenny Wallace that just went by. His car is back in the race. He is about 60-some laps down. And uh, that caution will be a good one for Butch Miller. He will avoid going a second lap down, come around to the back of the field. Trying to get Troy Beebe's car pushed down at pit road. The banana boat Ford has had a tough day right from the get-go. Wouldn't fire on the line and then just spun. While we're under caution, let's take this pause. We'll be back to Volusia County Speedway where Jeff Gordon leads Bobby Labonte, Todd Bodine, Joe Nemechek, and Steve Grissom. They're already collector's items. Do you have yours? Max Race Cards, featuring all your favorite NASCAR stars, the great moments, the men behind the scenes. Great to collect or trade. 1991 sets are here, and when they're gone, there won't be any more. This handsome 240-card set is only $33. For more details or to order, call 1-800-521-8867. That's 1-800-521-8867. Sets are going fast. Order your Max Race Cards now. Quick and easy, it can cut painting time in half. So get your hands on a real value, because the value of Wagner keeps on rolling. Here's the real beauty of Rust-Oleum Protective Coatings. A tough barrier against the elements. Rust-Oleum. The name that means protection. In America, your car doesn't just get you from here to there. It's a part of your life. To give your car complete protection, Texaco has developed Haviland Formula 3 motor oil with not one but three kinds of protection against heat stress, starting friction, and engine dirt. Haviland Formula 3. Add more life to your car.
coverage of the X1R Firecracker 200 on TNN is being brought to you by Texaco, official sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. Big packed house here at Volusia County, and uh, Dad watching intently here as David Bonnet was in a real hot pack of traffic there. Boy, they was about three and four abreast. He worked his way through there. I was kind of sweating it out, I tell you. He's having a good run here today uh, in the top ten. Jeff Gordon at the front of this field. Again, on this restart, he outdistanced Bobby Labonte by the margin you see. They run just two laps here under green. And trouble up in turn two. Jeff Burton and Jeff Green going around. That will be caution flag number six. And it comes out of lap number 93. Well, let's check in with, uh, with David Bonnet, Tony Urey, and the crew, and uh, let's see what's going on there with that uh, Sports Image Chevrolet. David, can you hear me down there? Yeah, I hear you, Daddy. How's that thing feel? I feel just like it did when we started the race. Well, just keep your nose clean. The thing's running good. Just keep working up there. They're thinning out in front of you. Normally what happens to me, it don't ever get to pass nobody. <laughs> I didn't hear that part. Said, <laughs> said he don't ever get to pass nobody? You've been passing a few of them. What? Just keep working. You'll do all right. I better get off here, Mike. I'll have him confused. <laughs> He's having a strong run here. 94 laps down. We're coming up on halfway. There's a look at the 10th place car. As we mentioned, Kenny Wallace also made his Bush Grand National debut in a Dale Earnhardt car. And uh, while you got your hand on your wallet, Neil, <laughs> let's, no, let's talk for a second about just what it costs to come here and run in this series and have a chance to run competitive like this. Well, you know, we did a deal with Dale to get the car down here. And when you get here, you know, thank goodness they got a tire rule. You talk about maybe eight or 12 tires at the most. You rent one of these V6 motors, and the rental one of them is around 5,000. If you want to buy one, they're 30,000. So it, it's pretty expensive, but thank goodness for the, that there's good sponsorship out there for these Bush guys, and now they're really starting to show their ability on these tracks, and uh, it's not a kid's game. I mean, it takes a lot of money and a lot of good people working to do it. Jeff Green comes off pit road, and Jeff Burton's car has been parked behind the wall where they have the hood up and the car going up on jack stands. 96 laps complete, Ward Burton trying to get a lap back. He was one lap down, and now he's on the tail end of the lead lap from Jeff Gordon, and that's the only car that's passed Jeff Gordon all day. Steve Grissom made a nice move on that restart. Uh-oh. Ward passed Jeff Gordon, but not, be, but not after the green flag was displayed. He just made the statement that was the only one that passed him. The only way he could do it is kind of jump him. He did get a little bit of a jump, Dang. and it's going to cost him. Good move, bad timing. Ward Burton gets the black flag, and he'll come to pit road for a stop and go. So it's Gordon Labonte. And Todd Bodine, then Joe Nemechek in fourth, Steve Grissom in fifth, Jimmy Spencer the sixth place car, seventh, Ricky Craven, eighth, Bobby Dodder, and Todd Bodine takes, uh, how did he save that? That's the second guy we've seen go out to the ticket booth and come back. That, that area there, you go out of three and four, and that's a, the road to enter the racetrack. When you get up there, you're going for a ride. It really shuffled things behind him. A lot of the guys got caught in the shuffle and losing a lot of ground. That was Todd Bodine. I saw it, but I still don't believe it. And right at the end of where he slid is the gate to go to the outside of the track pits. So you can go out to Route 40, come back around, and come in at Turn 1. Now there's an omen. Jeff Gordon has led a lot of these races at halfway, but the halfway leader, and their X1R, the sponsor of this race, that's a performance engine additive, they do have a cash prize up for the leader of the halfway lap, and Jeff Gordon has just banked that. Now this time, he's not gotten away so much from Bobby Labonte. No, I don't know if Labonte's decided to pick up the pace or maybe if Jeff lost a little something. He had to go around the 27 car on the outside as they black flagged him. And I'm just telling you, one or two times through the corner on the outside, and it'll cost you some tires. And he might have to cool him down to get him back under him again. There's Labonte tracking Jeff Gordon. Back off turn number four once again. 103 laps go on the board. They pulled out a good bit from Joe Nemechek and Steve Grissom. Jerry Glanville's car about to go again a lap down. Now watch Todd Bodine here. Watch him up in turn four. And he looked like a Neil. He was driving just right on ice. Yep, here he goes. He's going down in three again right in that same area. He's down to the inside this time. But all day long, even in practice, his car, if he gets the least bit high, he's sliding way up high on the racetrack. Back up with your leaders. And Labonte is closing in. 
Yeah, he's keeping the heat on now. That, that makes so much difference. You know, before Jeff Gordon had the luxury of just ride along and pace himself. Now Labonte has stepped the pace up and he's going to make Gordon run a different type of race. Now Labonte get, gets a little closer, drifts a little bit back, comes in closer once again. I'm not going to say he's going to be able to pass him, but he's going to make him use up a lot more race car than he normally would. 106 laps for Chevrolet shootout here. Much as they had earlier today at Daytona in the Pepsi 400, though here the roles are reversed with the Ford out front. There's Jimmy's. Oh, trouble in four. Spencer, Spencer up real high, got sideways. He skated the car off four and nearly turned it around. All you've got to do is get two foot high and then you're out of control. There's a 24 car in the same place. There's a caution back out. They might think there's something in that corner. I don't see a car. We've seen four cars in succession lose it in that corner. They might be going to check it. And Mike Porter goes way up high and he almost loses it up there under caution. There's something on the track though. I see debris over there in that corner. And they'll have a look at it and caution comes out for debris at turn three. There it is. Neil, the racetrack is breaking up. And uh, that's going to be right down at the bottom of turn number three. Now, that's similar to what happened up in turn two yesterday. Boy, you hate to see something like that happen, Mike. But it, I'm telling you, the conditions here I've never seen. I've raced at Daytona on the 4th of July for years. I don't ever remember the kind of temperatures and heat we're dealing with. And I've got, that's why the guys are having trouble getting in that corner now. Boy, they're going, I don't know what they're going to do with that. And you saw the dirt there underneath this asphalt. As we mentioned, this track used to be run as clay and was recently, not that recently, it was paved several years ago. So we'll have a look at the situation with 91 laps to go. Jeff Gordon has led every lap here. We'll be right back. This week, Jerry Reed hits the road. He's found down the of and Cupid's arrow hits the Statlers. Tonight at 9, 8 central on TNN. Get your pencil ready. Here comes a toll-free number for a free catalog on the Trailblazer Sickle Bar Mower from Troybuilt. Ordinary lawnmowers can only mow your manicured front lawn, but the Trailblazer mows off your lawn, giving you control of your entire property, even your most impossible areas. Now you can neatly maintain walls and fences, quickly eliminate brush around outbuildings, easily carve out safe fire breaks and paths, even keep streams and ponds open, beautiful, and useful. Trailblazer actually slices through weeds and brush like a hot knife through butter. You'll even topple brush and saplings up to one half inch thick. And with high traction powered wheels, steep hills are no problem. Call now for a free catalog and full details on a special limited time savings offer. For free information on the off-lawn Trailblazer Sickle Bar Mower, call toll-free 1-800-535-5599. That's 1-800-535-5599 for free information. Please call now. TNN explores America all year long. Is this the fountain of youth? Some folks think so. The Leon Springs, Ponce de Leon, the famed explorer. Maybe this was the fountain of youth he found. That's the old uh, grist mill in the background. Now you can go in there and make and uh, flip your own uh, flapjacks. Fish off the dock. Fun place to visit in Florida as TNN explores America all year long. And it sure looked cool, that water running out. I'd like to jump in there hey, a little bit. 72 degrees year round. Temperature of that water never changes. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, I'll be right back. <laughs> it's not that far, Neil. <laughs> 112 laps are complete. Jeff Gordon has led every one of them. Glenn Jarrett? Well, Mike, I'm standing with Bill Davis, Jeff's car owner. On that last restart, Bill, uh, Jeff didn't seem to have quite a, as big advantage. He couldn't get away from Bobby Labonte. Is the car okay? Our car's okay. I think maybe Bobby was just taking away a little bit of our advantage. Uh, we're the same as we've been. We're, we're fine. We're running real good, not loose, not tight, real happy with the car. Uh, Bobby's probably been laying back, decided to tighten it up a little bit. Uh, it looks like that, uh, you know, in, in weeks past, you've seen Jeff just uh, just take off and run away from everybody. It looks like he's pacing himself a little bit today. We're trying. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's what we're working on harder than anything else, just saving our stuff. I tell you guys, when you got a real fast race car like that, one of the hardest things to do is not to run it as hard as you can. But Jeff's doing a real good job. His car's okay. I just think that Bobby might be a little quicker, so maybe he's holding something for him. We'll see. Let a horse out of the barn. Hard to tell him not to run, huh, Neil? 
That's right. These guys, it's, when you turn them loose with some good equipment, they want to use most of it. So uh, I think he's like he's talking about, Bill Davis talking about, I think Labonte just stepped his pace up a little bit. This is Jeff Gordon's second race here at Volusia County. He finished 13th here last year. Mike, one thing that might have happened into it, Labonte's a smart little race car driver. If you see clouds coming in and starting to rain, you pick up the pace and you try to take the lead. And we've got enough damage in that corner over there. There could be some concern about what will happen here. We continue under caution here at Volusia County Speedway. And uh, Les Richter, NASCAR's uh, vice president of competition, is here to see this one. Came over from Daytona today. And uh, an interested observer at Watkins Glen and here at Volusia County, Brad Doherty, the star of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, is back at the track once again. You're uh, you're going to be a regular just like TNN. Yeah, I tell you what, it's exciting to get out to these race tracks each week or any chance I have opportunity. And uh, these guys are doing a super job out here today. I know you're from North Carolina, and I guess you wear 43 on your on your jersey. Kind of hard to see that uh, that fire suit hung up at the top of our show. <laughs> and Richard uh, put it on for Daytona for the last time today. Yeah, he, he went out today and uh, led the first couple of laps. That was extremely exciting to watch, and uh, I guess the heat just got the better of him. But uh, he's my hero, and uh, I was I was happy to get out and watch him today. I think he's kind of like Arnold Palmer. He, he may not be everybody's favorite driver, but everybody would count themselves a Richard Petty uh, fan. There's no doubt about that. He's been a tremendous for the sport, and uh, I'll tell you what, he's a great role model for young people. Now, you were involved in this sport for a bit with Robert Presley. Yeah, I was with Robert for a couple of years there, and uh, he had the opportunity to move on and to uh, sprout bigger and better wings, and I'll tell you what, he's doing a super job. I uh, came out today to support him, and uh, he's really going well. Well, Mark Rippon, the uh, Super Bowl winning quarterback for the Redskins, is going to have a race team next year. Uh, Joe Gibbs has one this year. A lot of folks from other sports coming into racing. Can you give him any advice? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's a tough sport. Uh, you know, anytime you cross over, especially being an owner, don't, you know, don't expect to go out and win right away. It's very, very competitive. There's a lot of parity at this level, and uh, he's got to be prepared then. It's not like playing football or basketball. You're going to win a few along the way. Uh, but this racing business, everybody's good. Everybody's tough and competitive, so uh, he's going to have to dig in and be ready. We'll keep Brad with us here for a minute and, and visit with him for a bit as you see them sweeping some of the debris that's been come up from the loose asphalt uh, here on the racetrack, and uh, we're informed they may put these cars under the red flag here in a couple of laps to, to aid in that, uh, in that track sweeping. Mike Greenwell, the Boston Red Sox outfielder, uh, drove in a race car on a short track at Seacock Speedway, went back and told the whole Boston press car, race car, what race car? And then Mike Adescavage's photo showed up on the front page of the Boston Globe. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll talk a little more about that end of the sport here in a second when we return to Volusia County Speedway, 115 laps complete, and Jeff Gordon up front. There are a lot of cars that suit the way I live. I just can't think of too many I can afford. There is this one. It's got a V6. It's pretty quick. Looks sharp. And winter's a problem. Now there's a Dodge Shadow convertible with a V6. You can even get one with a roof for under 10 grand. A roof could be good. Iron Mike on Rust. I hate rust. Iron Mike on tough. This is tough. Rust tough. This is rust. Holium? The dictionary defines tough as strong, not easily influenced. Like me. The definition of oleum is... Ah! We sprayed this rusty metal plate with fast-drying rust tough, exposed the rusted metal, then placed it in the torture salt fog chamber. The rust didn't spread. It stayed tough. You want tough? What do you want? Oleum. Got rust? Get tough. Rust tough. When it's hot outside, you want an Emerson Quiet Cool room air conditioner inside. Emerson Quiet Cool units mount flush so you can close the drapes. For fast maximum cooling, set the exclusive color coded controls on blue. For portability, easy installation, quiet operation, there is no match for the innovative Microsonic. With styles to fit most windows, capacities to cool most rooms, everything you want in a room air conditioner is in our name Emerson Quiet Cool. Just a reminder, proper maintenance with AC Delco parts can significantly reduce premature wrinkles. AC Delco, it's like buying time. The Nashville Network's coverage of the X1R Firecracker 200 is being brought to you by 
AC Delco. It's like buying time. Getting set to go back to green, 119 laps down. It'll be 120 this time and 80 to go as Jeff Gordon hauls them off turn number four and Bobby Labonte does not get a good jump. Nemechek may get him at turn one. I think we're going to see a big scramble. They're concerned about the track over there. Like I say, it's kind of like a weather condition. They want to get as many positions as they can as quick as possible. Labonte gets that second spot back, goes for a little bit of a slide there at turn four and hangs on to second. Well, if we thought that inside line was preferred line before, we're going to really see it now. There's Nemechek. He's coming around on the inside. He's trying to hold Grissom off that back straightaway. And Ricky Craven going after Jimmy Spencer and going to get him. Craven picks up a spot. Boy, Spencer just could have lost four positions, and he just turned left and took that position back. Here's your Napa Field standing update. Brought to you by Napa because there are no unimportant parts. Show you where your favorite driver is running as of just seven laps ago. Seventy seven laps to run here. All these cars that you're seeing on the lead lap. There's Butch Miller one lap down. Along with Tommy Houston. Jeff Green. Jerry Glanville and Troy Beebe two laps down and then Jeff Burton who spent some time behind the wall. Kenny Wallace 60 laps behind the wall with addition trouble now he's back out there. We're riding along watching our armor all in car camera. Might, Found it in Chuck Bounds car. Might take a look, look at this. They've changed their entire line. Okay right here instead of swinging off the corner to the outside up by the wall right there you see that little ripple on the track. They're having to run off the corner and just run down the apron on the back straightaway. So the lap times have went crazy. They're running slower, but they can't go around the outside of that area of the track. So right now it's just strictly single file up the back straightaway. There's some car sideways up there. And trying to get it back. That's Craven. The Chuck Bound goes past. There's Bobby Labonte. He's running in the second spot. Let's go to his pit. Well, Mike, I'm with Bob Labonte, the car owner and crew chief and Bobby's father. Bob, it looks like now that uh, Bobby is able to hang with Jeff a little better than he was earlier. Did uh, the racetrack come to you, or he just decided to push the pedal a little harder? No, well, it's uh, Slim Jim Chevrolet. He, uh, he just been kind of riding all day, but, you know, it was only about 80 laps left, so we thought he, put the, he turned the heat up on Jeff a little bit. You got any left for him? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he gave me an honest answer. And by the way, Bob said before it came, he said, Glenn, your job's going to be a lot easier today. Things are going good. I'm not mad yet. <laughs> it's still early. Up in four, Bobby Dodder is going out of the park on all four wheels. He just drove it right out there in turn number four. Caution flies. There he is up in the exit gate. Caution at lap 29, 129. We've seen four other guys do it. He's the only one that didn't make it back. The rest of them have made it around that part of the track. Brad, you ever get a floor like that where there's like a loose board or a ball take a funny bounce, that sort of thing? You yeah. got to kind of drive around it. Sometimes we get a little condensation on the floor because we play on a lot of floors where there's ice hockey also and they'll put the wood over top and it gets slick and you have to avoid spots and uh, it's no fun. It takes a lot out of your game. It's about like what these drivers are going through today with the with turn three and that spot in the back straightaway. No doubt about it. We're talking about Mike Greenwell, the Red Sox outfielder and his foray into behind the wheel down at Seacock Speedway in Massachusetts. And uh, so I got to ask if uh, can you squeeze through the window one of these things and, uh, and give it a run? Well, I, I could always get through the window, but uh, Robert and those guys wouldn't let me drive the car. They were afraid I'd tear up all the equipment before we got to the racetrack. So we would stick <laughs> the go-karts and those things. I tell you what, I'd park those guys every time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah, yeah, pick and roll means a whole different thing here. Oh, in this exactly sport. right. It's get out front and make that car as wide as you can make it. I'm not sure that the template to fit the car if he gets in and have a little bubble in the roof. <laughs> could. Keep his head in there. <laughs> a little bit tall for that thing. <laughs> That could be. Any of your fellow players are race fans? Oh uh, yeah, all of the guys on my team are race fans. They, they are now, have, right? Yeah, they don't have any choice. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> a lot of those guys keep up with racing. It's just you know the sport's growing by leaps and bounds, and uh, you know guys are real interested in the sport. It's a great sport. It's a lot of fun, and you're right. The sport is is growing uh, just greatly. Oh yeah. As did basketball over the past five or six years. You know the the way. Uh, with the games being nationally televised and so much more now and perhaps the loosening up of the games to allow fellows like like a Michael Jordan to, sure. to showcase the kind of moves he has. No doubt I mean, about it. it. It's, it's made for great entertainment and uh, and this board has seen similar games. Yeah recently. they're doing great. Uh, the TV coverage is, is awesome. In this sport. 
Well, you're just talking about TV coverage. You went right by that hole they were talking about on the back straightaway. That one. And they're, uh, they're really limited. And, I mean, it's nothing. You know, you, when you do these things, sometimes you, you say, well, the track's not done this. I don't see how they can keep pavement down in these kind of temperatures. Mike, the promoter, said that as soon as this race is over, he's going to concrete on the racetrack. He's concrete the corners. And I think with the when we go these radial tires, you get to a little track, it's real sticky, real tacky, like you want it to be to get a hold of the racetrack, and you hook these motors up, you're trying to just virtually rip the pavement off the ground, and they're going to, some of these tracks are going to be looking something other than pavement. They just can't keep it down there with the traction these cars are getting now. Well, Clay Arrows of Martinsville, who's always been one of the sports great innovators, a uh, good number of years ago put concrete down in the bottom lane because the modifieds were just literally peeling the asphalt up, and now Bristol, Tennessee is going to concrete. And uh, let's have a look at the top ten here. We are going to get a red flag as they clean up out there once again in turn three and in the back straightaway. There is the red. 134 laps down, 66 to go here on a very hot Saturday afternoon. And the, the fireworks have been tearing up the pavement here. Top 10, Jeff Gordon, the race leader. Bobby Labonte in second, Steve Grissom in third, Ricky Craven, Joe Nemechek. That's the front five at 134 laps. Jimmy Spencer, Chuck Bound, Todd Bodine, Robert Presley, and that young Bonnet fellow there in the top 10. Give a call, Neil. Let's, uh, let's, let's give them a call and see what they're up to down there. Can you hear me, David? Yeah, I hear you, Daddy. How you feeling? Yeah, I hear you. Are you hot? About to burn up. That's all right. Just, that's just, you just got to, uh, let me see here, 70 more laps to go and everything will be just fine. You're doing good. Just keep your nose clean there. Uh, they're going to work on the track a little bit. I tell you, that's hard to give advice because I, you know, I'm a lousy spectator when it comes to driving <laughs> one of those things. Uh, I have to be careful. My wife said, now, don't dare talk to David on the radio, because sometimes at Birmingham, I coach him a little aggressively. <laughs> so I'm having to really be careful what I tell him today. Yeah. <laughs> There's David. That's Sports Image Machine. And that is a Dale Earnhardt car, if you join us late. Kenny Wallace also made his Bush debut in a Dale Earnhardt race car. Going to have a look here out. At, this is the middle of the back straightaway. Now, I'm a little surprised at the track tearing up here. You would expect, as they come off the corner, generate those huge side loads uh, with those tires. You might have a problem. But one thing you see here, the depth of the asphalt is, uh, is, is not that great when they did pave this racetrack. Mike, but another thing, too, the back straightaway is a D-shaped oval. And that's just the part right there where you're going down the straightaway. You come off a two, and it slings you out to the wall. That right there is where you make the apex back in the corner. And right where it's tearing up is where they crank the wheels back down to enter, getting ready to set up. So you really load the car with side load right there. These radials hook up so good that they just don't slip any time. And that would be a problem area right there in the middle. That's, that's really the roll out of the throttle and set it up area. And that back down really hurts the track, too. Yeah, if, folks, if you're familiar with Michigan International Speedway, the back stretch here at Volusia looks like the front stretch of Michigan. It's curved all the way around. So the field is parked. There's the concrete they put down last night and uh, put a lot of calcium in it, and it cured in just 12 hours. They were racing on it first thing here this morning, which surprised a lot of people that didn't think it could be done, but they did a great job with it here. And a lot of work was involved with the thing. This pavement right here, they came in, and they put a lot of calcium. Everybody said, you can't pave it one day, put concrete down, and race on it the next day. But they put a lot of calcium in it. They did a lot of work on it, and it's hard. I'm telling you, that, that is no. not going to be the problem on the racetrack. The, the other <laughs> no. part might go away. Let me tell you about this patch job. There was a fellow up here in the stands yesterday watching the race, bought a ticket. His name is Steve Poplin. He works for uh, the Flagler County Road Department, and he saw him down there starting to do this work, and he said, you know, I know something about this stuff. I'm going to go down there and see if I can help. Wow. Yes, because I know they'll be back tomorrow. Just, the heat conditions are so bad this time of year, and this type of a grade isn't the best for black topping. And as we see, the cars would be, be a lot of problems tomorrow in racing if they didn't do something about it today. So if I wanted to see any racing, I definitely want to get out here today. I got a little bit of experience in this, so I just kind of jump in here with the guys and get the job done. It'll be cured real good by morning. And, be some good hot lap sessions tomorrow and qualifying some good racing tomorrow. Steve Poplin. Now, uh, he, they said, well, uh, you know, are they, are they going to give you a ticket for this? And he said, I don't know. He says, I'm waiting for the sheriff to come down and kind of run me off. But it, actually, Neil, he took over the whole paving operation. Yeah, he kind of oversaw the thing. You know, he did that kind of work all the time. And he said, let me get in and help you. And they squared it up, did a good job with it. And I saw the track promoter this morning. And I said, what would you do about the guy that worked with you yesterday? And he said, they gave him a season pass, year-long pass. He stayed out here to 4 o'clock this morning to help him get the track ready. And uh, bought him a ticket for the Pepsi 400 as well. Four tickets to the Pepsi today, 400. So. He's a race fan. He got to see his money's worth today. There's Chuck Bow. Now, he looks a little warm as he walks over pit side. 
climbing out of that Nescafe Pontiac. We're under the red flag here at Volusia County Speedway. We'll be right back. Iron Mike on Rust. I hate Rust. Iron Mike on Tough. This is tough. Rust tough. This is Rust. Only him? The dictionary defines tough as strong, not easily influenced. Like me. The definition of oleum is... Ah! We sprayed this rusty metal plate with fast-drying rust tough, exposed the rusted metal, then placed it in the torture salt fog chamber. The rust didn't spread. It stayed tough. You want tough? What do you want? Oleum. Got rust? Get tough. Rust tough. You know that ultraviolet rays can damage your skin. But did you know that UV rays also crack and fade your car's vinyl, leather, rubber, and plastics? Introducing RAND's UV99. UV99 is a sunblock for your car's vinyl top, dash, seats, and tires. UV99 blocks over 99% of those damaging UV rays. Armor all? Just 18%? Not even close. New UV99. It's sunblock for your car. Country's just a state of mind And that's a simple fact Y'all Don't have to be a cowboy To know just where it's at Real beer taste that's less filling City or country Miller Lite's everything you want a beer to be Come on, let me show you where it's at Miller Lite, it's it And that's that the power of an upright in the palm of your hand with the Royal Dirt Devil. It has a revolving brush and it can handle all kinds of dirt. Pick up the handheld vac that really picks up. Dirt Devil by Royal. Out of sight and on my mind. Billy Joe Royal. Your memory is always with me. Holly Dunn. He really has The stars are singing full throttle on Drive and Country. Tonight at 6.30 Eastern on TNN. Welcome back to Volusia County Speedway. Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet. Brad Doherty joined us here topside. And uh, how hot is it down there, Glenn Jarrett? Well, Mike, it's real hot. Standing by. The first thing the guys did when they stopped the cars, they all got out. They all started screaming for water, Gatorade. Then they came over here. There's a big truck here put out in a lot of shade. Todd Bodine, you look hot. Man, I'll tell you what, it's hot out there. I'll tell you, it gives us Bush guys a good feel for what the Winston Cup guys go through over at Daytona this morning and down at Talladega. You know, they run down there in 98, 100 degree heat, and that's, we got about 105 here now. And uh, on these short tracks where you work your butt off every lap, it's pretty tough. How hot do you figure it is in the cockpit of the car right now? Well, my oil temperature is about 260, and the water's about 240, so it's it's got to be up around 140 or so. <laughs> That's tough. Now, I got to ask you a question. Uh, a lot of guys are having problems down in three and four. You did. You took an excursion almost out through the parking lot. What's going on down there? Well, there's a big hole right in the middle of the backstretch and right in the groove. And and I run, just running up front, run a third and, and run right through it. I was behind the guy in front of me, Bobby Labonte, real close. And, and I couldn't judge where it was on the track. I knew it was pretty bad. But once we got out in the groove and got through that hole, it, it just was no control. And I'm about, about, about the fence there. Is there a lot of debris, a lot of rocks and gravel and grit and stuff up in the groove there? Yeah, when, when it comes out of the holes, it, it settles up in the next two grooves. And I mean, we're having to run right on the bottom of the backstretch just to stay out of it. And now, now we got the one going into three, and you got to run across the apron to stay out of it. So it limits your passing pretty bad. You, you only limited it to one and two now, and uh, it's hard to get set up and get somebody down the backstretch and have to put them out in the marbles, and it's just a dangerous situation right now. Well, Todd, we appreciate you taking time. I, I can hear you're winded. I'm going to let you get your breath now. I'm going to shut up for a while. Mike? You know, the only trouble about climbing out of one of those cars is you're going to have to climb back in. <laughs> and I don't think it's going to cool down just sitting there either. Let's have a look back through the field as they are red flag here for uh, a breakup of the race tr track surface at 134 laps. There is your front five. Jeff Gordon has led every lap so far. Joe Nemechek there in fifth. You saw Todd Bodine slipped back to eighth spot as a result of that excursion. Robert Presley, David Bonnet still having a good run here in his maiden voyage in the Bush Series. 
Tom Peck, Shauna Robinson with the Polaroid sponsorship on the Don Beverly card doing well here. Mike Porter, Bobby Dodder, Tracy Leslie back in 15th. These cars are a lap or more down, having spent some time on pit road, or Troy Beebe got way up near the fence not once but twice. Back through 20th place. Jerry Glanville, Jeff Burton, Kenny Wallace all still running. Wallace is about 60, maybe 70 laps down. Didn't get an exact count of when he got back on the racetrack after uh, the problems he had with his ignition. Glenn? Well, Mike, we're uh, just sitting in a nice little circle down here, contemplating what's going on out there. Joe Nemechek, the top of the show, we talked about uh, how nice it was to come home. Not so nice now, is it? It's hot. Well, it's almost, uh, you know, I never run dirt before, and I think I'm getting my first experience today. It's, it's really slick out there. Uh, they, they got a couple holes, uh, one in the back straight away, and we, we got to put on the brakes and go down the bottom of the racetrack now to, to stay out of it. And then when you get to turn three, you got to just almost rub the guardrail to stay out of the dirt down there. There's another big hole, and it makes it tough in turns one and two. It's starting to break up again. Uh, the Goodyear tires are just working super. Uh, the Texas Pete, Lazito's Pharmacy, Sweetwater, Chevrolet ran great today. And, you know, we, we hit the marbles at the start of the race, and you can't do anything. And uh, there I passed Jerry Glanville, and, and evidently he got in some of the loose stuff that's starting to come loose in one, and he went up and took me with him, and it was a heck of a ride. Well, on that last restart, uh, Bobby Labonte had a little problem there, and you got up beside him, but you just couldn't hold that second spot. Yes, uh, it, I got up beside him, and he drove in pretty hard, and and I was waiting to see if he was going to get loose, and then I hit some of the loose stuff. There's, there's some rocks starting to come up in one and two, and as soon as you hit that, I mean, I got loose coming off the corner, and then he got by, and uh, that was all she wrote. So now uh, I think we have a good enough car. We can go back to the front, but I don't know about the racetrack. I mean, it's, it's, it's just not turning into a real good race now. Well, you just, you just have to be awfully careful out there, and, and you know, it's, it's tough enough to have to fight the traffic and everything else, but you got to really discipline yourself not to make a mistake to get in that stuff. Yeah, I was behind Todd when he hit some of those rocks, and it was unreal. I mean, he would throw them up, and they're hitting the front of the car, and it, sound, it sounds like someone throwing a cement block on your car. It's unreal. Okay, we'll let Joe catch his breath. Thanks. Joe Nemechek from nearby Lakeland. Let's look at the field parked up here in turn one. NASCAR could, at their option, call this race complete as we have completed more than half distance. They uh, are... Not doing that, they are clearing this track of debris and hope to get this thing back under green here shortly. Jeff Gordon has led every lap. Nine cautions for 40 laps, including this uh, red flag, two of them for debris. 15 of the starters still running here on the lead lap. There's a look at the uh, Detroit gasket pit of Tracy Leslie. And, of course, those Nomex suits don't breathe. About the best you can do is sweat into them, and they act kind of like a radiator. We'll get out of visit with Shauna Robinson. Here is Glenn. Well, you know, Mike, the, the two guys that I've talked, for, talked to before, they're sitting there, and they're all winded, and they're out of breath, and they look terrible. And here's this pretty young lady. She looks fresh as a daisy. <laughs> you look like you're in a lot better shape than they are, Shauna. Well, I poured a few glasses of water down my back and woke me up a little bit. But, you know, it's just an obstacle course, so you just got to kind of hold your own out there, and we're just... Staying on the lead lap and trying to make our way to the front. Well, what about uh, your your physical condition in this extreme heat and humidity? Uh, has it been real tough on you? Well, I haven't really wore out. Just the heat gets to you. And as long as in the cautions, we I just let the water run down me, and it pretty much revives you again to go start again. So it's not been too bad, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Well, also, you haven't been, been running uh, as many races as you're used to running, and so also your stamina is probably not still up to what you'd like for it to be. Yeah, that's it exactly. It's the consistency, and when you're not running a full season, you have that, that lack, and, and that's something to where just imagine how good I'll be when I have a full season and get all that experience. Well, uh, guys, i got to leave her alone right now. The uh, guy that fixes her hair wants to mess with her. Yeah. So, see you later. <laughs> Glenn, <laughs> oh, I've got a line there, but it's, it's too early in the show. Uh, let's take a look at how the point standings would fare. Should this race uh, be called complete right at this moment, Kenny Wallace would hold on to the point lead, but look how it would shrink. Joe Nemechek would climb right out there to within 28 points of Kenny Wallace. Bobby Labonte just 20 points back of Nemechek. Uh, Jeff Gordon, were he to win this race, would climb up within 16 of Labonte, and Robert Presley would be right there as well. And those front five would be separated by just 91 points. It'd be a horse race again. Let's go back to Glenn with uh, the man who's running second in this race right now. Well, this is Bobby Labonte, and uh, seated to his left, we'll get to him in a moment, is the leader, Jeff Gordon. These are tough guys. All those other guys over there in the shade, man, they're pouring water. These guys sitting right out here in the sun. They're getting more rays. 
Tough out there, isn't it, Bobby? Yeah, trying to get a little tan on my neck in here. It's a little hot out there, but, you know, it's worse under yellow when we ride around. But, uh, unfortunately, we've had yellows and this red here to because the racetrack was coming up a little bit. But, you know, hopefully they'll get something worked out or, or do something where it be under a safe condition and we can finish this race or do whatever it takes and uh, try to get the Slim Jim Chevrolet going or, or do like sit like we are now. Well, it looked like there earlier on in the race, Jeff was able to get away from you a little bit there, but the last two restarts, you closed up on him uh, quite a bit and were able to run right with him. Were you holding back a little? Well, no, I just tried a different line, and that, that's helping out a little bit. And uh, right now, I can stay kind of consistent, you know, but uh, that's about all. So if we do go back to green, we got some laps left, and maybe we can stay that same line and uh, go from there. Well, put you on the spot just a little bit here now. We saw on that last restart, you had a little bit of a problem there, letting Nemechek get up with you. What happened? Well, I just didn't get to go. I spun the tires there. There's so much junk on the tires. Uh, you know, all that asphalt back on the back stretch and dirt along with it. It just spun the tires, and I just didn't go. Uh, he got up underneath me, and I pinched him down there three and got my position back. <laughs> so I was thankful of that because I didn't want to get hung up on the outside, especially in the rut out there. But uh, I think we can do a little bit better next time. Well, we were real thankful, too, because we were standing in your pit getting ready to talk to your dad, and he is somewhat excitable, and, and he takes a real avid interest in what's going on out there. And uh, so he, when uh, when you took off there and Joe got up and said, boy, he jumped up, I thought, uh-oh, we may not want to talk to him now. Well, we're serious about this, and we definitely want to get back down and uh, try to race Jeff for a, for a win here. And uh, if we get going back again, we'll just uh, see what we have for him. I can't speak too loud because he's right here, so uh, we'll just uh, we'll take it one step at a time. Okay, Bobby, thanks. Good luck to you, Mike. Thanks, Glenn. Last year, Bobby Labonte, at this point in the season, led the Bush Grand National point standings by 73 points. Right now, he trails by 124 and is in third place. NASCAR's Bush Series officials having a conference down there in turn one. They were joined a moment ago by a couple of the drivers talking about the race surface and uh, whether or not they can get this back into a raceable condition here. We've completed 134 laps, 66 to go. In the X1R Firecracker 200. Mike, there's a lot of things got to enter into this. You know, with safety is the first thing. You know, you want to have a good race and all, and the fans came out for it, but you got to have it where it's safe enough. When these cars running off in the corner, having to straddle these ditches, and one guy get a little bit over out of the line, and he's going for a ride. So I'm sure NASCAR is looking at the safety side of it. And you saw yourself, Les Richter is here. He came in from the Daytona track a while ago, and he'll probably be involved with the same with Robert Black, and they'll probably talk it over and see what they can decide to do about it. Well, let's go back down and visit with a driver who came here, came last year to the midpoint of the season in 10th in the points. Right now, he finds himself fifth and with a couple of victories. What? A couple of victories and well on his way to another one here today. He's led every lap so far. That uh, baby Ruth Ford looks like it's really working well. It really is. It's a shame to see the track come apart because uh, the car is working so well before that happened. And, uh, you know, right now it's almost impossible to pass anybody unless they get out, out of the groove or hit some of those rocks that are out there. But I tell you, the guys put a, a really good car underneath me, and, and I'm just trying to drive it nice and straight and be easy. Right now, you know, what happens is you get into a, a, a rhythm, and, and it takes a little while to get into a rhythm. Plus, it, all the stuff on the tires, it takes a while to get all that brushed off. But, you know, it takes about 10 laps for you to get comfortable again, and it's hard to do that right now. Well, you look like you've been comfortable so far. We have word now that uh, you're going to get to go back to the car here pretty soon, so we're going to let you cool off just a little bit more, and best of luck to you. Jeff Gordon, who's led every lap here. 134 laps complete. Jeff Gordon leads Bobby Labonte, Steve Grissom, Ricky Craven, and Joe Nemechek. Last year, Davey Allison added something new to his car. It wasn't wider tires or a slicker shape. It was the same Haviland Formula 3 motor oil you can buy, straight off the shelf, to add more life to your car with complete protection against heat stress, starting friction, and engine dirt. Now, we're not saying it was Haviland Formula 3 that gave Davey the energy to lead more major NASCAR races than anyone last year and win this year's Daytona 500, but we're not saying it wasn't. This is Miller time. It's a duck. It's a tray. Yes, ladies. This buy, is buy, not. Buy, buy. If you buy five of them, you get one free. Miller time. Here we are in Arkansas. Here we not are in Miller Nebraska. time. Here we are in Florida. It's a simple idea. Miller time. Not. Make your Fourth of July Miller time with this official USA Team volleyball. Look for it where you buy Miller beer. Everyone knows when it's Miller time. Split fire earned a United States patent. Split Fire doesn't look like any other spark plug. And the patented Split Fire doesn't work like any other spark plug. 
five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. Quicker in the quarter mile, a 4.8% gain in mileage. There's nothing like a split fire. You'll get more power and more mileage, or your money back. Get the guaranteed split fire advantage at leading automotive stores from coast to coast. Iron Mike on rust. I hate rust. Iron Mike on tough. This is tough. Rust tough. This is rust. William? The dictionary defines tough as strong, not easily influenced, like me. The definition of oleum is, ah! We sprayed this rusty metal plate with fast-drying rust tough, exposed the rusted metal, then placed it in the torture salt fog chamber. The rust didn't spread, it stayed tough. You want tough? What do you want? Oleum. Got rust? Get tough. Rust tough. Patty Loveless, in concert, doing songs from her newest album, on stage Wednesday on TNN. Al, our special guest is Ricky Skaggs. Hi, Katie. Hey, Al. Ricky, I have a question for you. Okay. I have been practicing on my guitar, and I want to go all the way to the Grand Ole Opry. Uh -huh. What's the best way? Al, in your case, I'd say you need to get an Opryland USA passport. Really? Oh, yes, sir. It's a great deal, Al. For just $69.95, you get all the Opryland USA attractions, and that's a 20% savings. And it includes a matinee performance of the Grand Ole Opry. Plus three days of rides and shows and fun at Opryland theme park. You get a reserved seat for a country star concert in the park. A ticket to Nashville now. And a day cruise on the General Jackson showboat. And a Grand Ole Opry sightseeing tour of Nashville. That sounds like the best country music vacation value in the country. It is. And if you want to get your Opryland USA Passport, just have your credit card handy and call 615-889-6611. Ricky, I really want to know, what's the best way to perform on the Opry? Well, Al, in your case, practice. Lots of practice. Don't you think so? Please. And turn that guitar. <laughs> Welcome back to Barberville, Florida, Volusia County Speedway. As the fans wait patiently and work on their tans, NASCAR's Bush Grand National drivers are down there. That's Robert Black in the blue shirt. He's the Bush Series director, Les Richter, director of competition, Jerry Cook, who had been the head of the modified division, and Brian Franz, a uh, third generation member of uh, the stock car racing management family. We're all down there having a look at the racetrack. That's about as much horsepower as you'll ever get in one place to make a NASCAR decision. They were all here for this one. Well, we'll find out here shortly what's to be the fate of this race. Let's check with Glenn. Well, Mike, one of the car owners, uh Bill Davis, the owner of the uh, car that Jeff Gordon has ridden up front in all day. Now, the race driver has got his, his tail on the line out there. Bill Davis has got the car on the line. Bill, uh, what are your feelings about this? You want to see him go racing again? My checkbook's on the line, right? Well, I mean, sure, our first obligation is to put on a show for the fan and for our sponsors and our manufacturers. But uh, these are not good racing conditions. No, I don't think we should go back racing. Well, I know it's a tough decision to make, and it's, and it's awfully hard to stand here and say that, but sometimes you just got to look at things in the best interest of the competitors, uh, the, the cars. You're in that tough part of the season where you know, you got a lot of racing to do, a lot of traveling behind you, but you still got a lot to do, and you got to take that into consideration. It's easier for me to say because we're up front. But <laughs> seriously, it's not a good deal. You know, we should not go back to racing. I mean, I hate it uh, for NASCAR, for the track promoter, and, and for the race sponsors and for our sponsors, but uh, it's not a good situation. We don't need to tear a bunch of stuff up. Excuse me, I didn't mean to step in front of the camera. <laughs> right, right in Bill's line of vision. Well, we appreciate your candor. The, the way that you've conducted yourself all year certainly speaks well for you. And, and uh, we, you know, we just have to get that opinion. Uh, guys, he just simply doesn't feel like he wants to go back out there. You heard the reasons why. We're just waiting now for NASCAR to make their decision. Gosh, Glenn, are you trying to get the ride in that car for next year? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it never hurts. Jeff's going to leave. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Now, remember, like, uh, when we get a little sprinkle on the racetrack, Neil, the lead driver always says, it's raining hard, you got to stop the race, pointing up there, you got to throw the flag. And the guy in second place always says, it's fine out there, let's go. <laughs> Turn them loose. Let's go. You know, it's kind of unique to see a car under there. Earnhardt's probably sitting at home watching this thing, and I bet he's voting not to restart it. <laughs> yeah. The last time he saw David, it was still in one piece. That's right. <laughs> Here's the, uh, the uh, tour guide from... Uh, <laughs> Rand McNally put together this schedule, folks. So we just came from Watkins Glen, New York, a thousand miles down here to Barberville, Florida, and there goes to Loudon, New Hampshire next week. Then they go to Talladega, Alabama at the end of the month. They'll run Saturday, the Winston Cup cars there Sunday. Go up to Indianapolis, Indiana, and Raceway Park, to Rougemont, North Carolina, Brooklyn, Michigan, 
and then over to Loudon, New Hampshire, then in the space of uh, five weeks, five straight races on the Bush Grand National schedule. Hope you can join us at one of these races, either here on TNN or come on out and see some great stock car racing with the Bush Grand National Series. Let's, uh, we've called this thing the map from hell, and I guess it really is if you're a truck driver for one of these teams. Let's show you just what they go through over this stretch. From Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, one week later, they went 878 miles up to Watkins Glen, New York. Now, Throw a set of tires on the truck and come all the way down here to Barberville, Florida. 1,200-mile drive. Wow. Stop off in Charlotte at the shop to change clothes. Stop off again on your way to Loudoun, New Hampshire. That's 1,350 miles. Up there to New Hampshire where they go next week, and, and the series continues on from there. So, uh, Neil, you talk about buying race tires. You'll be buying some truck tires, too. <laughs> i tell you what, if you were just hauling apples and delivering them around the country, it'd be hard to make the route, much less stopping and running all these races. These, the truck drivers and the crews, everybody on this circuit, really put in a lot of miles. And... It takes quite, and we were talking about the expenses a while ago. That really enters into it. You sure. know, these guys have got to run the equipment, but they've also got to travel all over the country to get it done. It's a tough schedule, but of course the demand for these races is great all the way around the country. Let's go back to Glenn in the midst of all that somewhere. Tower. Uh, if, you, if you don't want to check the water, then we need to go ahead and get the drivers in so that they can come to a conclusion, whatever that's going to be. Well, guys, what that, what's that concerning the NASCAR? They, the tower has made the decision. Robert Black has told the crew chiefs that if they're concerned about water and temperature, they can check the water on the cars right now, but they are going to go back out and finish this thing. Uh, it is not a popular decision. There's still discussion from the car owners and the drivers as well. As Bill Davis uh, said, most of the guys feel like that the uh, conditions may be a little unsafe out there, but uh, NASCAR has said we're going to finish this race. Well, in NASCAR's defense, uh, let's point out that as yet, not a single car has been damaged and forced from the competition. Uh, yes, the track is slippery. Uh, cars get into those, uh, those bits of ruts. Uh, pieces of what was asphalt and a bit of dirt come up on the racetrack, and it makes the surface treacherous and slippery. However, uh, to this point, not a single car has been forced out of the race as a result. The only thing I can say about that, Mike, every one of these guys, these cars, you look at every one of them racing on the same piece of asphalt or the same piece of dirt. It's the same for everyone. They'll just have to let that enter into what happens on the moves they make on the track. See Chuck oh, Bound yeah. already in his car, and we get ready to go here and put the drivers back in the car with 66 laps to go. All right, they've ordered them back to the cars now. Ordered, that sounds like an order. <laughs> <laughs> no volunteers. <laughs> no, no volunteers. <laughs> and, and I think the heat of the day has something to do with it, too, is, you know, we, we said half-jokingly, you climb out of one of these things in a in a full sweat. Probably the last thing you want to do is climb back in. You know, Mike, one thing that was really interesting while all these guys were over here cooling off, Chuck Bound got out of his car, went over, got a drink of water, and then he went back and sat down in his car this entire time. He's the only guy that's been there, but he sat in that hot race car the whole time, so uh, maybe he didn't want to cool off too much. It might, you know, might cause uh, some problems for the guys that cooled off too much to go back to that extreme heat, so a uh, little different strategy for Chuck there, but... Uh, Glenn, I'll, Glenn, I'll tell you, we do that with the sports cars. We run an open cockpit car, and whether it's, if it's heat or if it's rain, they throw me in that thing about 45 minutes for the race start so I can either get good and wet and cold if it's raining or good and hot, work up a sweat so that when the race starts, you don't even think about it anymore. You're just, you're just ready to go. So uh, I think he's got a good strategy there. We'll see how it pays off. 66 laps to go as the drivers climb back aboard here at Volusia County Speedway. We'll be right back. This is Miller time. It's a duck. It's a tray. Yes, ladies. This buy, is buy, not. Buy, buy. If you buy five of them, you get one free. Miller time. Here we are in Arkansas. Here we not are in Nebraska. Miller time. Here we are in Florida. It's a simple idea. Miller time. Not. Make your 4th of July Miller time with this official USA team volleyball. Look for it where you buy another beer. Everyone knows when it's Miller time. It's in his head. His heart. In every muscle, the energy to go further. Texaco System 3 gasolines put this kind of energy to work for you on the road. System 3 reduces deposits and cleans your engine in all octane grades to help put the heart and muscle back into older cars and keep new cars running like him. It's 8 o'clock in there, right? Yeah. My truck wouldn't start. And the lights work, but the engine wouldn't turn over. So I figured it must be the starter, right? Well, I went to AutoZone. They said, let's test it. 
Turns out it was okay. So we tested my battery and found that it just didn't have enough juice to crank it. Now get this. I didn't have to spend a dime, because they even charged my battery for free. Get out of here. That kind of service? Hey, you just can't beat it. The bright, invigorating scent of Coast. Discover how it wakes you up and jumpstarts your day. Up and at them. No, no, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. <laughs> Coast, the eye opener. Welcome back to Volusia County Speedway. Lots more racing this Independence Holiday Weekend. Tomorrow, the ASA AC Delco Challenge Series runs the Players Limited 400 out in Calgary, live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time here on TNN. The drivers are back aboard their cars and getting ready to fire them back up here at Volusia County Speedway. And uh, tip of the hat to the fans. They've been quite patient through this delay. They Certainly, they understand uh, both the problem and the complexities of trying to get this race back underway, but under a safe condition for these drivers. And uh, Neil, let's get a little, little first-hand knowledge from down there. Can you hear me, David? I'm not sure he's got his mic. All right, we'll get you cranked back up here in a second and uh, get that in-car radio on the line. See, David looks like he's strapping it, putting his gloves on now. When he got out of the car, I noticed he's giving a timeout signal a while ago. I think he liked that stop. <laughs> <laughs> he needed a breather. He doesn't do this very often. Not races of this length, I'd imagine. Can you hear me down there, David? Yeah, I hear you, dude. Did you get cooled down pretty good? Do what? Did you get cooled down? I can't hear you come again. Did you get cooled down on the stop? Oh, yeah, I feel good now. All right, they're not going to run very long, so you're going to have to get serious now. Nobody said it was going to be easy. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Good luck. Well, I guess he just have to bear down and go now. You know, I tell you what, Mike, it's uh, it's good training. You know, the Bush Series really works. You know, David's running a lot of short track stuff, but to come into something like this is like him going to a Daytona. And uh, the guys in this series that run this thing, they're they're capable of going over to Daytona this morning and running in any of those Winston Cup cars and win races. The seasoned guys in the sport. And this is certainly a good training area for him, and I feel good to see him get back in it. Now look at Chuck Bound. He's got that full face helmet on. Uh, those Simpson gloves that he wears are double layer of Nomex with a leather palm. And most all these drivers now are wearing a good double layer fire suit. Some of them also wear the Nomex underwear uh, that's mandated by some of the other sanctioning bodies. And, and uh, so you're really in an oven there before you climb into the race car. And now, aren't, aren't you glad, Brad, you get to play in those little singlets, those itty bitty oh, shorts? Oh, man, we got it, man. I got those little <laughs> skinny shorts and a tank top shirt on, and uh, I get all the ventilation. These guys are tough, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm getting envious now. You came in a booth like that. <laughs> yeah. man, that's the only way to go. It's too hot around here. <laughs> they fired them up here at lap 134. You hear the engines in the background, and they're going to bring the cars around pit road, and we are told. Uh, that the cars will come down pit road and one crewman from each car because technically we're under a red flag condition you cannot work on the cars uh, but they're going to allow the teams to replenish the drink bottles uh, in the cars as we get set to run the final 66 laps of this race Mike, for the people who really don't understand inside those cars there's a little thermos bottle probably a gallon in capacity and they use a, a clear a, a plastic tube from that bottle right up the so uh, seat belt strap and they can put it in their mouth and suck cool water out of that thing during our Gatorade or whatever during the course of the event. And it's been so hot, they've all emptied that thermos bottle in there. And a lot of the guys are tough and just don't have them. <laughs> but yeah. the ones that have it in there, they want to fill them back up. Yeah. Well, it's the kind of day that uh, Elvis might have picked up those tickets Jerry Glanville left at the front gate. Wouldn't have been surprised if he did. Boy, there's a good indication. You see the cars coming down through there and there. Well, we don't, that's the apron, that little checking line down there. And they're having to stay right at the very bottom. And they're not going. Now they put the cones out. I don't know what this is going to do. When they put this cone out, they, they're saying, hey, look, we want you to run a little bit above that. But that cone is not welded to the ground. Right. No, that cone's going to end up right about in that bright spot after yeah, about that, five uh, laps. <laughs> somebody's going to not bury your way over, and they're going to move that cone, and they'll be right back on that inside again. Cars that come around this time on the racetrack. Pit road is closed. I was trying to see if they're counting laps. Yes. They will be. Yes, they are.
this thing is kind of playing it by ear right now, Mike. I mean, even though we saw the voting and the decisions made, it's even changes as we said here. You know, they're saying they're going to come in, they're not going to come in. They're going to have to make up their mind. Uh, some of the guys don't want to pit, don't want to come to the track. So. Well, if you pit now, you give up track position, and who knows how many laps we may get to run here. What they could possibly do in this race is go back green, and then they could make a call from the top of the track up here and tell them in the pits, everybody's in radio communication saying, we're going to go 10 more green. So it just won't be cold turkey hay in the skies. This thing's over. Uh, they're gonna, they'll probably give them a notice if they do shorten the event. And, and I'll tell you, NASCAR is real good. If they see that the condition on the track is unsafe to the point where the cars and the drivers are in jeopardy, they won't hesitate to red flag the race. No, but the, the point was also brought up that these people in these grandstands right here, a lot of them started at 6 o'clock this morning. I passed a bunch of them going to the big track. They watched that race. They came over here, and they want to see the race run. So I feel like they're going to give it every effort they can to get as many laps in as possible for the fans. There's Jeff Gordon, who has led every lap of this race in the Baby Ruth Ford. He's been twice to victory lane this season. Bobby Labonte in second. Steve Grissom, the blue car in third. Ricky Craven in fourth. There's Bobby Dodder. They are going to come down pit road this time. I see the NASCAR officials opening pit road up with a flag, and also they're going to be there to police what happens to each car. They've got a lot of officials, and they're going to... Note their way on the right side of pit road. They'll bring the whole field down there and then stop them briefly and allow that service to take place. Nobody will lose their position on the racetrack while this takes place. They'll, they'll have to be in a hurry because the thing that suffers right now is the race car with a motor running. These little B6 cars, most of them don't even have a fan on them. If you do, it's a little small electric fan. So they can't sit there long and let those things idle while they get a drink of water. They're either going to have to cut them off, shut them down, and do what they're going to do, or they're going to get hot sitting there. I didn't see anybody go over. I see, uh, I see one water jug headed for Chuck Bounds' car, and uh, Jeff Hensley standing out there. Now, you're, you were right there inside the car with Chuck as they uh, bring that field up. Let's check with Glenn. Well, I'm standing by with Clyde McLeod. He's the crew chief on uh, Todd Bedine's car, and uh, they asked you guys, they asked the drivers if the cones were raceable. What's Todd saying? Well, Glenn, it's it's a bad situation, but what are you going to do about it? He just said they need to move the cones closer to the hole so nobody will cut through the hole. But it's better than running down in that hole because it just drags the stuff all back out there again, and uh, it's just too bad. It ain't really nobody's fault. I guess you can't run here during the day in July. <laughs> well, Basically, this is a kind of a gentleman's agreement. Okay, nobody goes below these things. Uh, you think they'll honor it? Well, most of them will, but I don't know about people like Jimmy Spencer. They ain't got a damn thing to lose. I don't know if I'd trust him. <laughs> oh, geez. I'm not touching that. Nope. I'm glad Cl Clyde has been to the Felix Sabata's charm school, I think. <laughs> and with that, we better pause for this word. We'll be right back to Volusia County Speedway. Well, I drive a race car for a living. I depend on the parts and pieces in my car. And I feel so confident knowing that Pennzoil is protecting the moving parts inside of my engine. Pennzoil's quality and protection give me the confidence I need to do my job without second thought. The protection that Pennzoil offers this race team makes us feel great. That's why I have the confidence to use it on the street and in my race car. I recommend Pennzoil to everybody. Pennzoil, performance, protection, quality. And it's another day of sub freezing. It's your boss on the phone. He says, do you still work here or not? I called the airline like you said, and sure, there's a later flight tomorrow. When you just can't wait to get started, start with a champion. Pound for pound, the most powerful automotive battery you can buy. Get your champion now by calling 1-800-289-4627 for a dealer near you. The time has come for the cordless power roller from Wagner. It's so quick and easy, it can cut painting time in half. So get your hands on a real value, because the value of Wagner keeps on rolling. Here's the real beauty of Rust-Oleum Protective Coatings. A tough barrier against the elements. Rust-Oleum. The name that means protection. And isn't it true that this auto part did, in fact, come from the defendant's car? Objection! Prosecution is leading the witness. Overruled. You may answer the question. This part most definitely came from that car. 
And how can you be sure? I work for Napa Auto Parts. It's my job to be sure. No further questions, Your Honor. Napa people are parts experts, so they can answer any question, whatever the case may be. Welcome back to Volusia County Speedway. Service uh, being completed here in just a moment, and we've talked about what a hot day it is and how tough on these drivers. Glenn Jarrett is with a fellow who kind of looks like he might have been in a similar situation once before. Hey, Coach, we're all country music fans, and we're just kind of wondering that we've seen your video with Confederate Railroad. Do you feel as beat up running this race as you did in that video? Well, you know what? It, uh, we finished that video at 9 degrees above zero. Right now, that feels kind of good. I think we're in here at about 135, so it's a little different. Ever think about maybe putting some of your football players into this kind of heat conditioning? I don't believe a 300-pounder could sit in this. I think we'd have them down about 250 in a hurry. And that's the last thing he wants. Good luck, Coach. He's having a lot of fun out there, Jerry Glanville. And uh, let's show you what we're talking about. If you haven't seen the video, Jerry Glanville went to play and uh, have a little fun making this country music video. Jerry Glanville, he's a good sport, and he's having a good time out there. And I don't know if the heat will hit him a little harder than uh, that girl did over the head or not. Do you think he'll, next time he's out there in football practice, he'll tell them guys in 50-yard sprints to cut him down about 10 of them in a hurry? Yeah. <laughs> he might think about that sweating a little bit now. And he warmed up today. But he's serious about his racing. This is not goofing around for him. He's serious about uh, having a run at Butch Grand National Racing, and he's out there giving it a good go. Might There's your lead duo. I tell you, better be serious. Is every one of these drivers are gonna, what they got to do now? All of them know that it could be called within a few laps, and this is going to be sprint racing. Uh, it's going to be just very few laps, probably, they, and it might go the full extended. But I feel like you're going to see a sprint for the win right now. And everybody's going to throw everything out the window and go for it. One to go, and we'll go racing. Uh, Brad Doherty, you've been having a good look at this. Have you got a pick? Oh yeah, I'm picking that 59 car, Robert Presley. He's going to. I think he's going to come up through that pack here in just a second. He looks good. Yeah, they may put the dirt digger tires on it. <laughs> anybody that he might. Anybody can get on the outside will win this thing. Exactly they right. Drive it out there. <laughs> so we now have uh, the backstretch chicane, if you will. Looks like they're getting ready to go green this and, time by. And we will. Now Bobby Dodder's up on the outside. That's the lap car. I zero eight. I don't really know that I'd want to try a lap back out there, but they're going to. Pace car begins to stretch out the field. 60 laps to go. Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte, Steve Grissom, Ricky Craven, and Joe Nemechek, green flag. Gordon must have some second gear in that Ford. He took right off, and Donner dropped in and separated Gordon from the second-place car. Boy, there's a bunch of cars stacking up coming off the corner over there. Todd Lodine lost a spot to Robert Presley, who moves up one. Presley. Chuck Bown and Jimmy Spencer to the inside. Here they come. Got some lap cars out there really bombing it up. Going down in one here. That's Steve Grissom getting underneath Dodder. And now Ricky Craven underneath that bright orange machine. Then Nemechek, the fifth place car. And Spencer. Jimmy Spencer coming to the front. Jeff Gordon with a couple of car lengths on Bobby Labonte. There's the lead separation back to second place. And you're inside Chuck Bounds' car as he and Jimmy Spencer go at it. See that wrinkled up back corner a while ago? He stopped going down in the corner, and he got a real hard tap, and it came to the back of that car in. There you see them as they battle for sixth place, and right behind Bound is Robert Presley once again. Sometimes, early in the race, we remember Chuck Bound had a little bit of problem, but he pitted. He's got fresher tires than these other guys. Sometimes a little problem early in the race pays off later. This car here also got fresher tires on it for Presley. Look at the nose of Presley's car from when he got into bound earlier. The, uh, that camera on the back bumper had a good look at that one. There's bound. A lot of glare on the windshield as they come down the back straightaway. The sun in the west. And Jimmy Spencer just ahead. Look at those. Look at the back end of that car dance. Boy, he's got his hands full. Spencer gets everything there is in a race car. They joke about it, but I mean, he hustles the car around the racetrack. There's Presley just kind of chopping away at the back bumper Chuck Bound. You saw the nose just slide right out from under the car that time as he came off the corner. It just skated off to the side. Heavy, heavy side load, and there the car just dances just a bit. Yet uh, the cars are slippery right now. Not only are we concerned about a little bit of track condition, but they got a lot of laps on their tires now. These guys probably, some of them would have made pit stops, but they haven't done it. They couldn't afford to because this thing might be short. Robert Presley lost it up in three and four. Got it wound back in, didn't lose any positions. 52 laps to go. 
And here's that battle for sixth place again, and it's a dandy. Jimmy Spencer, Chuck Bound, right there, nose to tail. Then it's Todd Bodine, David Bonnet, and Tom Peck right behind them. There's Bound having a look on the outside, found nothing there. He's trying a little different line, Chuck is. There's Spencer trying to get around. That's Glanville. Yeah, that's Glanville. I couldn't see the car number, yes. Glanville. And Chuck Bound just keeps looking to the outside, looking, looking. You're right, Neil. Look, they're right down on the guardrail. Just as close as there's a car spun over here. Jeff Green, turn two. Yellow at lap 150. I believe this is the tenth yellow flag of the day. And the second one involving Green. He spun at turn four earlier on lap 32. 151 laps in. We might get it in a piece at a time like this. There's Down it. between turns one and two. Yeah, but see the line they're running right there, even on the caution? They can move below that, getting in that corner. They, these drivers can move around in different areas. They'd like to have that line up there, but they're just kind of running a road course, an obstacle course right now, and uh, it looks like they'll be able to get this thing in. 49 laps left. What I'm kind of surprised not to see more of, Mike, is flat tires, which is a good tribute to the radial tire. It runs a lot harder carcass and the sidewalls and everything, and a lot more bias, uh, a lot more ply in the tire itself. So normally under these conditions, you'd expect a lot of flats. We haven't seen that. No, I think I've only seen a couple of cars come on pit road unexpectedly for tires in this race. Every car that started this race is still out there. Kenny Wallace is down 40 laps or more after an ignition problem, but everybody else is still in the running. It's basketball like racing, Brad, in that it looks real easy on television. Oh, yeah, it looks very easy on television. <laughs> uh, I watch a lot of games sometimes, and I look at it, I say, man, that looks easy. But once you get out there and actually get in the midst of all that stuff, it's, it's a pretty tough time. <laughs> yeah, but I got to tell you, we had a basketball game one time down in Daytona Beach right over here, and we challenged a bunch of guys to play a ball game, and it nearly killed all of us. <laughs> a couple of times up and down the court's all we could take. <laughs> well, it's, it's definitely different, but I tell you what, these race car drivers are great athletes. You've got to be tough. I know why you can do it so good. You're so long-legged, it didn't take you but four steps. That's exactly right. you got to cover that ground. <laughs> <laughs> 47 laps to go. We'll be right back to Volusia County Speedway here in Florida as Jeff Gordon, Bobby Labonte, Steve Grissom, Ricky Craven and Joan Nemechek are the front five. Players Limited 400 Sunday live on TNN Motorsports. It's T minus five days till Little Texas takes over TNN. Live in concert Thursday night at 1030 Eastern. This quality adjustable bed costs 50% less than these three quality flatbeds. 50% less. Yet Craftmatic offers these advantages over flatbeds. First, it adjusts electrically at the touch of a button, so you can read in bed, watch TV in bed, snack, chat on the phone, do a crossword puzzle, and relax and sleep in wonderful comfort. Plus, if you suffer from low back pain or edema or swelling of the legs, unlike any ordinary flatbed, an adjustable bed may temporarily provide relief. Call toll-free to receive this free adjustable bed catalog by mail. Get the facts about the adjustable bed that costs 50% less than all three of these quality flatbeds. 50% less. Call for your free catalog now. Call toll-free 1-800-638-1400. That's 1-800-638-1400. Call toll-free 1-800-638-1400. Forty-five laps to go. Jeff Gordon in the lead. Bobby Labonte, Steve Grissom, Ricky Craven, and Joan Nemechek. The rest of that top ten shows Jimmy Spencer in the sixth spot. Chuck Bound, Robert Presley, Todd Bodine, and David Bonnet held on to a top ten spot just about all day here, Neil. He's had a good run. Yeah, he's been running away. I noticed just a while ago he got a nose up under a couple of cars and kind of backed out. He's trying to be careful. I told him not to tear that car, but you got to learn a little bit before you get real aggressive. I'm tickled to death what he's doing. Well, Bob Labonte having a discussion with one of the NASCAR Bush Series officials. 44 laps to go. Doing a little sweep up work down in turns one and two, that shot we showed you just before we went to break. And uh, just trying to get some of the loose pieces up there. And as you said, Neil, it's, it's the same for everyone, everybody. They, they try to get this service prepared as best they can and 
and uh, and try to run the best race they possibly can on it. And the next time this series comes back here, this whole track will be concreted, much as like Bristol, Tennessee, the bottom lane of Martinsville, Virginia. You'd like to race every week on a track that's just smooth as velvet, no bumps, no no crazy turns off the corner, no real tight places. But when you roll in and everybody's on the same court, I don't see how there could be anything said about it. I don't think it's gotten out of control. I, I think the drivers are showing a lot of discipline right now, more so than normal. But they, they've got to get out of here. We just showed where they're going next week. They've got to get out here one piece and then worry about next week's race. It's a little more sweep up going on. Uh, check with Glenn Jarrett. I know he's down patrolling pit road. Unless he's in one of those air-conditioned haulers, I know he's down there. And just see, just see what the mood is down along the pit lane. Uh, I think uh, I think that was Tony Urie. Yeah. Oh, somebody down in that Neil Bonnet pit. Or Tell him. All right. I, there's uh, Glenn. I'm yeah. sorry. Let's uh, Glenn. We wanted to check and just see what the mood is along pit lane here. Well, Mike, it's still pretty much the same as it was before they restarted the cars. That all the drivers are radioing in now once they've gone back out of their green flag conditions and saying basically that the surface is unraceable. They don't feel like it's safe. They're just having to pick their way through. And uh, you know the the. The contention down here is that that's the fact they're not really putting on a race, so they want to, you know, they think they should just, uh, just call this thing. We did get word that uh, NASCAR series director Robert Black was going to go down and personally inspect the track in turns one and two, then make a decision from there. So that's the reason for the extended uh, caution flag right now. As we get more information, we'll try to update you. Well, I've been down there doing some sweeping, but it looks like the track crews have now left that area down between turn one and two. There's our armor all in car cam. Chuck Bound. One to go and we'll go racing. Pulls up behind Jimmy Spencer. Well, they got a record going down the back straightaway in a cleanup truck. They better pick up the pace. They'll be out of the way time they get back around. Spencer's done well here. His only other run at this racetrack was in 1989 where he was he finished in the last position. Had blasted through the pack from a poor starting spot, was going to the front. He was involved in a wreck that took him out of the race. Team he's driving for, Rob Moroso's team, or Dick Moroso's team, won that race here in 1989 with Rob Moroso at the wheel. Look at Ricky Craven, Joe Nemechek, and there's Spencer Bound, Presley, Bodine, and Bonnet, and Tom Peck. 40 laps to go here at Volusia County Speedway. This time, Bobby Labonte can't quite hang on to Jeff Gordon as they get the restart. No lap cars in the way, but. Gordon pulls up smartly to a two-car length lead. Yeah, Gordon got a good jump in, just what he needed, a little bit of cushion where he'd be a little more careful leading the race. Single file, they come off four. Back to turn one, Grissom in third. Ricky Craven in fourth. And this is still a good battle right here for sixth spot. <laughs> Robert Presley just filling up Chuck Bound's bumper right there. Now there look goes to the inside, and there goes Bound. Lights him up, and Presley sneaks through. Neil Bonnet comes to his feet, and David works his way by. And uh, Troy Beebe spun to miss Chuck Bound. Caution flag, lap 162. And Gordon goes for a big slide up there, coming out of turn number four. Here they come to the flag. Grissom came to the flag first. Now that's kind of a wow. That's kind of an honor deal. You're just supposed to, you know, they say you don't race back the flag, but you got to protect the lead. This is going to be interesting to see what they call here. Jeff Gordon went way up high in turn three as the caution flag wave got up in the marbles. The body got underneath him, and then Grissom just put his foot down. And it looks as if Steve Grissom beat the pack back to the flag. NASCAR officials are in conference right now over how to call that one. Usually it's a deal where, you know, you, it's kind of a driver's uh, code. You just kind of stay in line and go back. But they were fighting for the lead, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they call this. If Grissom has the lead, we may see some fireworks here at Volusia County. Grissom's pulling back up there. He's getting right up behind the pace car on his own. And Jeff Gordon's not letting him in line. Matter of fact, he took a swat at the right front fender then. <laughs> They're showing 31 car leading the race on the board. I don't know if that's official. No, no, the scoreboard is unofficial. Watching Bobby Labonte trailing Jeff Gordon. Steve Grissom is right up there. Now we've seen the car of Jeff Gordon capable to do about anything he wants to do. But if this this sticks right here, if the 31 cars leading the race, it's going to be tough for him to get around on this track where it is. 
He got way up out of the groove there at turn three. What happened when the car spun, when Chuck Bound spun, not so much Chuck, but when Troy Beebe spun, there was a lot of stuff on the racetrack. Okay, there they go in that trouble area right there. there okay, there's Chuck. 63, Chuck Bound, the rear end broke loose on his car. He's sliding up the racetrack. Presley went under, Bodine went, there goes David Dow side, and there's another car, and Grissom, uh, while this one, Grissom stood in the gas right here coming no, up. We're still okay to that point. Now the track's still okay. Here it is, as Chuck Bounds saw it. Here they go, coming up the back straight away. Saw the back bumper again, bumper cam. There he's spinning back in, broke loose. Here getting in the gas. A lot of people don't realize when you turn it around, you don't use the brake pedal all the time. He's feeding the throttle, trying to drive the car out of that spin. And you saw the car bumping there just before it went for that ride. Everything there was fine. Then Troy Beebe spun going into turn number three. And when the leader came around to the caution flag because Beebe's car was still stopped there, Jeff Gordon got way up in the loose stuff. And they do have Grissom up front now with Labonte and Gordon in third place. Glenn Jarrett. Well, I'm standing with Bill Davis to add insult to injury now, Bill. Uh, they put you back in third. Well, it's a tough deal. I mean, that's what happens. You know, he got up in the loose stuff, and they had not taken the yellow. They were running back to it, and we ended up third. Um, Can he get back up front? Well, I don't know. It's just so impossible to pass, you know. I mean, I feel like we've got the superior car, but it's going to be awful hard to pass. Boy, that's tough to lead this thing like that than have that happen. Uh, and, and like he says, have the best car, but nothing he can do about it. Just when you thought you'd seen everything, we are going back to green. Steve Grissom is the race leader. He was the first car to the caution flag. Bobby Labonte second, and Jeff Gordon is third. Ricky Craven still fourth. Nemechek fifth. Spencer sixth. Robert Presley is now up to seventh. Todd Bodine eighth. David Bonnet ninth. And Tom Peck has moved into the tenth position. As they run this line here, I feel like the pass is going to have to be made. If you get up under him right here off a of two, you've got to get up under a car right there, and there's where Gordon's making the move. If he can get under him right there, but you're limited on that ability, how much track he can use over there. And then off of the corner here, there we are. Labonte's up under him. He got under him and into him. There between three and four, and it may have cost Bobby Labonte because here is Gordon. And around they go. Not enough room for two cars at once. Can they get going? There goes Gordon. Now the body refires. Caution flag waving. I take it back. We have seen everything today. <laughs> no doubt about that. Let's have another look at it. Neil? He got up under him like we was talking about this part of the racetrack. And he's down there on that inside. Matter of fact, he's down on the flat part of the racetrack. But there's not much to work with. It's just a racing deal. That, Jeff's going for it. Labonte's using up all he can, can, and they got together getting in the corner. And both cars go up the racetrack. Jeff Gordon was going for it last week at Watkins Glen, got down into that turn five that they now call turn nine, lost the car, and would have finished second. Here's a different angle on it. Here they are. He's up. You can see he's just up there, just beside him and up to where he thinks he's got the, got the lead going in, not the lead, but positioning. And he goes on that flat part, and the car actually broke loose. It looked like it broke loose out from under him, Mike, and he slid up into it. Jeff Gordon is on pit road. That rear bumper and taillight panel hanging loose. Well, he doesn't have a thing to lose. Uh, he's going to be on the rear, and now he's got the new tires. Glenn? Well, they are just giving service, changing right side tires, putting fuel in the car, but the main point of concern is that whole rear body panel. They're trying to bungee cord it back on. They can't rip it off because it's still secure on the left side, but the whole right side's loose. You see him beating and pounding. Their main concern is to get that back on the car. They're going to have to send him back out, bring him back in then because they're going to lose a lap. NASCAR is holding them. They've ripped it away, and now, Jeff, uh, Robert Black is down here now, and he's holding the car. Robert Black himself has held the car, so he has lost the lap. I don't really understand why, but uh, we're going to find out, I'm sure. Big discussion going on between uh, Robert Black and Bill Davis. Obviously, Davis and the whole crew are not at all happy. Uh, I can't say I quite blame them because I thought that they had gotten everything done they needed to do to get the car back out in front of the traffic and stay on the lead lap, but Robert made the decision that he had not. How many times this year has Jeff Gordon had the fastest car in the race taken off from the pole like a rocket and come to some kind of misfortune? He is now watching the field go by a second time and will be two laps down.
rough riding is the call on Jeff Gordon as he went down into turn one. That's strictly a, a judgment call. You know, they they view it and they make a decision and they go with it and uh, they call that move, you know, down the inside aggressive. And, uh, you know, it's hard to call something like that. They have to do it every now and then. Way down know, on right? the bottom of the racetrack in, in what was I clean hate, pavement to get the lead. I hate to, to make it. that call myself. Green flag. 25 laps to go. Steve Grissom now has rookie Ricky Craven on his bumper. Craven, who ripped up that car pretty badly here in practice yesterday, now finds himself in second place and going after the lead at turn three. Right on the back bumper of Steve Grissom here comes Craven drawing a bead on Grissom. Craven is underneath at turn two. Grissom just able to hold him off. Nemechek is third, Spencer up to fourth. Here comes Craven again, he's got the inside. And they tango together, waltzing down the front straightaway and trade a little paint. The 91 Bush North champion, Ricky Craven giving Grissom a ride down the back straightaway. Lead change, Craven in front. Here comes Nemechek, Spencer on the bottom. I can't believe it. Jimmy Spencer just rocking it up into third place. All the way across the apron into that move. That was quite a move. Cuts Nemechek back to fourth. Robert Presley is fifth. Todd Bodine is sixth. David Bonnet in seventh. And around goes Craven all by himself. Racing back to the flag. It'll be Grissom. Wow. I'm near speechless. <laughs> I tell you, it's hard to say what's going to happen next. <laughs> I, I just can't imagine. Ricky Craven leading this race, looking for his first Bush Series win. And what a feat that would be for a rookie. Got down there and into something, and around he went. No contact, apparent. Here's a look. You no, know, I got in the lead there. Mikey went in there and just lost it on that particular part of the track. There was Spencer already making a move on the 31 car on the inside. Nice job they did of avoiding Craven. Ooh, Bobby Dodder came close. The rest of the field goes by. Craven still on the lead lap and still a good run for him. 180 laps, 20 to go. I don't know what's going to happen in the last 20. Glenn? I'm standing by with Doug Williams. He's the crew chief on Steve Grissom's car. Uh, good news he took the lead. Bad news he lost the lead. Good news he's got the lead again. But the bad news is look who's behind him. Well, Glenn, you know, we're here coming to the race and, uh, you know, let's hope the best man wins. The Channel Hawk Oldsmobile and Steve is really hooked up right now. We're excited and made the best man win. Can you hold uh, Jimmy Spencer and Mr. Excitement off? Yeah, Mr. Excitement's out there, but I think we got something for him. You know, just out running clean and let's go racing. <laughs> well, it's been interesting so far. It's going to get more so. Ricky Craven on pit road. He doesn't want tires. He wants to finish this race. Let's have a look at this move by Jimmy Spencer. Yeah. The 87 car slipped just a little bit. Look at Spencer down. He's completely off the racetrack on the apron and made the pass. Unbelievable. Jeff Gordon penalized two laps for rough riding. He got down on the bottom of the racetrack in turn one, about where we just saw Jimmy Spencer. But he and Bobby Labonte got together, and uh, NASCAR deemed it an unsafe pass. Both cars spun to the back of the field, and... Gordon is two down. This time, Ricky Craven's back in, and being at the back of the pack has nothing to lose by taking on those tires. Looked like David got a little shot in the rear. They stacked him up real. When that was happening, he got a real hard lick in the rear and seemed sailing. See if he stretched his neck a little. Can you hear me, David? David, can you hear me? Might have stretched his radio yeah, wire a little. Yeah, I think he might have knocked the wire loose that time. <laughs> got a pretty good shot in the rear. Cost him about two positions, too. Hit him, slid him way up the track. But. Tell you, the one more spot, he's going to be on the leaderboard. Yeah, this one of these deals you want to survive. David Bonnet starting his first Bush Grand National race. Given one to go again, Mike. As a proud dad up here uh, looking on nervously. Yes, nervously. Nervous, <laughs> nervous, <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Never was that nervous when I was in him, I promise. Oh. Oop. A little hello to Tom Peck there. As the field kind of bunched up. Well, we'll try it again, folks. 17 laps to go. Steve Grissom at the front of the pack. Joe Nemechek right behind. Jimmy Spencer is third. A little discussion here. Who will take the restart next on the outside? And here they come. Green flag.
Jeff Gordon trying to get back one of his two laps against Steve Grissom, but the starter is breaching for the black flag. Bobby Dodder tried to get out just ahead of him. Dodder only one lap down, and, and Gordon two, but Gordon has been black flag. A tough day for the pole sitter. 15 to go. And here's Dodder to the outside of Jimmy Spencer, who is no longer quick, got stuck in the slow lane there. And Craven, Mike Porter go loose up in turn two, and the caution flag is out. Back to the line they come with 14 laps to go. These restarts are really rough on these guys. They, it takes them a while to get sorted out. And I tell you, they're banging them up these last few laps. Here we go, Dan, in the first turn. Oh, the 27 car spun right in the groove, and everybody had to go up around it. Got that real loose stuff. Boy, he's lucky nobody hit him sitting right in the middle of the track. Ward Burton back running again in the Gwaltney's car. And Jeff Gordon comes to pit road for the penalty stop. They'll put him tail end of the field. Ricky Craven back in. They'll put left side tires on his car this time. He's the last car on the lead lap. Not going to be about 10 laps to go. You talk about a 10 lap sprint for a win. These guys are going to have to scramble. Glenn? Mike, they wanted to bring him in the, the last caution period. Like you said, he's the last car on the lead lap putting fresh tires on it. They didn't have a position to lose on the racetrack. Going to go right back in the same position. So might be a little bit of an advantage for him. Some of those guys with worn tires. So he's just going to give it all he's got. You saw the blue on the front of that car. That car is painted purple. All that blue, and there's a sea of it on Craven's car, is duct tape. I'll tell you something that showed up on that last time off that corner. The 08 car, Bobby Dodder, he moved outside. Everybody's tiptoeing through that corner so much, he moved two lanes out past four cars coming off the second turn. So somebody might have saw that thing. I'm not so sure a good race car might be able to move to that outside past some cars coming off the corner. Did you tell David about it? No, I'm not going to mention it. He'll be knocking <laughs> the pants <down. laughs> Okay. I think I'll let that be a secret. Coaching only goes so far here, right? 12 laps to go. Give it one to go this time by. And it will be. It'll. Here we are Saturday night. There'll be a Saturday night short track shootout. For 11, it'll be 10 laps when they come back. 10 laps to go next time by. And they'll take the green flag. Steve Grissom beat Jeff Gordon back to the caution flag and has since held off the rest of the pack. Now here's Gordon and Dodder again trying to work out who's going to restart on the outside next to Grissom. And if they keep that up right there, they both will get black yep. flag. They got to sort it sorted out. They got to let Grissom get up there beside. Him. Now if they don't run over the pace car, we'll be all set. Here they come. Ten laps to go. Who will win it here at Volusia County? Nemechek can't get through the lap cars. Grissom is out there all by himself. With Gordon and Dotter right behind, Nemechek's going to really have to run hard to get a chance to challenge Dean Grissom here. Nemechek second, Spencer in third, Robert Presley in fourth. Todd Bonines raced his way back up to fifth. Sixth is Tom Peck. Seventh, now Chuck Bound. That's a big cushion for Grissom. Nemechek has cleared Dotter. And here comes Spencer to the inside of Nemechek. They trade paint, but straighten out. I, I kind of felt like this was coming. Spencer's the guy. He's not going to be content to sit there. He's going to make a run on him. And here's Brad's pick coming to the front. Robert Preston right there behind. Gordon trying to get a lap back from Steve Grissom. Clearly, he has the fastest car here, but he is now two laps down with seven to go. The leader, Steve Grissom. And Gordon running him hard. They're second and third. Nemechek and Spencer. Robert Presley right there as well. And Jimmy Spencer puts the chrome horn to Joe Nemechek. He's up under him. He's got the line. The other problems, Nemechek's hung out. He's got a lot of cars fixing work on him right here. Finding his way to third place is Presley. And around goes Gordon. He's up in the fence. And out of the ballpark just about. Caution flag at six laps to go. And four cars tangle at turn three. Mike Porter, Ricky Craven, Ward Burton, and Butch Miller are all stacked up in turn three. Burton gets away. No, he doesn't. 
Uh, there's just going to be four laps left, and it looks like that car is hung up on that berm. It's going to be hard to get him out of there real quick. And a weary Bill Davis takes off the headset. The fellow who owns that baby Ruth Ford. If it wasn't for bad luck, no luck at all today. Here's what happened. They go down in there. Grissom's got that inside line. Going right down the back straightaway. There's the bad place on the track. I think Jeff's just out there in the loose stuff. There's nowhere for him to go. He got in that loose stuff and it just turned around. He's going to go for a ride over in the, all the way over the top into the fence. Driver who led every lap of this race from the pole until he got in the loose stuff racing back to the caution flag is now against the fence. Ricky Craven got caught up in the aftermath. He, Ward Burton, uh, the Mike Porter car, and they, Butch Miller. And they say up. Ricky Craven is dragging fuel, is either sailed, fuel cell dragging or fuel coming out of the car. There's Jeff Gordon. He's okay. Well, he is okay. He's not pleased. Yeah, he's not happy about that. Craven. Craven trying to get back out there. Yeah, they totally destroyed that car. Practice just about the place where Jeff Gordon's sitting right now and got it back together. We're about, had a good run going, and now they're, they're having a lot of trouble. Not sure if he might have lost a lap in that incident up there in the back straightaway. I know he, he made every effort to get away quickly and may have. We'll double check the scoring on that. Two laps to go, and this race will end under the caution flag. Yeah, there's just no way to get it straight now. They're going to try to get that car off there real quick, but not, no, this is not going to be able to do it. Now oh, the fortunes of war. For the Miller Pit Crew of the Race Award, let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Well, this is Doug Williams, crew chief on Steve Grissom's car. It looks like you're in for your first victory of the year. Regardless, we're awarding you with the Miller Genuine Draft Pit Crew Award for the race. Congratulations. It looks like victory's imminent. Glenn, we really appreciate this, the whole crew. The first thing we'll do is thank, thank God and help us. It's a very emotional day for us. We just want to thank everybody. We'll be back on the bars. We'll be home soon. Okay, he's uh, very emotional about it. First victory since he has become crew chief. Mike? Here is Steve Grissom coming around turn number four behind the safety car, which is the only car here that is not badly banged up. <laughs> One to go. Jimmy Spencer, what a ride he put on in this race. What a drive to come up to second spot. And uh, Brad Doherty, Robert Presley brought that thing all the way to third spot. It looked like he, looked like he was coming for more. Yeah, he did a really good job to get that car up front. And, uh, it, you know, it's a shame to see Jeff Gordon have such a tough time today. But he was fast all day, and uh, it was a very good race today. There's a look at Grissom's car. You go home with that one like that and say, boy, I won the race. And so what does second place look like? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. As the wrecker hauls Jeff Gordon's board to the garage area, Steve Grissom will pass by on his way to the checkered flag. And first victory of the season for Steve Grissom will come today in the X1R Firecracker 200. It'll be Grissom in victory lane. Last year here, he finished ninth fourth in 1990 and 18th in the first race here as a disconsolate Jeff Gordon makes his way back to the transporter Robert Presley comes up to wave congratulations and will be in victory lane with Steve Grissom when we return to Volusia County Speedway in Barberville Florida right after these messages Texaco official sponsor of the 1992 US Olympic team and by cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Genuine Draft Light, taking the country by storm. Steve Grissom has just earned his sixth career Bush Grand National victory. Glenn Jarrett. Getting a big drink of cool water there. Victory does not always go necessarily to the absolute fastest car. What a great move you made racing back to the line. Well, I tell you, you know, we dropped off into three there, and uh, I don't think anybody saw the car sitting there, and they all, uh, Jeff got up, got in the loose stuff, and Bobby uh, got up there a little bit, and I said, man, that's an opportunity. And just dove low, and we got sideways off of uh, four there, coming back to stripe. But uh, all in all, that's the a, that's a move that won the race. You know, like I said, we didn't have the fastest car. And, you know, we're finishing under caution and all, but uh, I tell you, we'll take a win however we can get it. Well, you got it, and congratulations. Mike? 
Well, today, 16 caution flags. That's sixth on the all-time list for this series. 78 caution laps, ninth on the all-time list. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage from Volusia County Speedway in Barberville, Florida. Steve Grissom. For Neil Bonnet and Glenn Jarrett, I'm Mike Joyce. So long from Barberville, Florida.